your host, Bumper Gomez. What's going down, everybody? Welcome to another crazy Wednesday, right? Bumper's Wacky Wednesday. Um, I want to go ahead and throw this out there right away. Uh, I'm, I was having malfunctions with the program that I use, so I'm doing it the classic, the, the classic way, so I won't have any fancy banners or uh, numbers uh, tonight. So um, <clears throat> with that being said, just bear with me. We're still live. You can hear it. You'll be able to hear us both. Uh, and and uh, I'll go ahead and post my phone number. It'll be in the comments. And we're really looking forward to people calling in with some questions, uh, whatever they may be. Maybe you don't agree with something that we're talking about. But with that being said, man, welcome to another edition of Bumper's Wacky Wednesday. I'd like to, uh, to thank you guys for 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 joining us and and hanging out with us um it's going to be a great evening i've been looking forward to this i say that with, with most of my guests but um talking with my wife and and uh praying with my wife and just i i really been looking forward to this so without further ado my my guest tonight is none other than my brother in christ mr jesse ibarra, ibarra yes sir. How you doing, Jess? I'm, I'm a blessed man. Thank you for having me. It's an honor to be here, and I say that with this day, with uh, such humility. You know, I, I feel humbled, as day, especially coming on and and um, right after your last guest that you had. You know, that was such a, a powerful guest, and then you had Sister um, Martinez. That, that that she was very powerful. What's her first name? Is the Gigi. Gigi. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, so you've had some, you've had some, uh, some very good guests, and uh, and it, so it's an honor to be, you know, part of your show. Thank you for having me. No, no, thank you, thank you for coming. <clears throat> hey, and and I'm real with the guests. I, I, there's there's no there's no uh, shame in my game. I told my buddy right here to the left of me, you're right. Hey, dude, get here at six thirty so we can talk. This and that. This guy shows up at 7.29 and 35 seconds. But let me tell you, there's, and I apologize for that, but what a great way to, um, to you know, open up your show. Um, I was running late. Uh, I was taking a shower and getting myself ready and stuff and, and tending to Sylvia. As um, many people may not know, Sylvia and I have been divorced since 2011. Esther, but she's my wife. You know, she's she's uh, she's she's the love of my life. Um, she has multiple um, diseases, multiple sclerosis. Um, uh, she also has this the uh, stiff person syndrome, and uh, in addition to that, she has Parkinson's and some other things. So as I'm showering, the lights went out, and <laughs> right in the middle of it, like oh boy! And then uh, of course I have to tend to her. Yeah, okay. You know, because um, uh, Scripture, the, the Word of God tells us that our first ministry is our home, our family, as they, and then, and, you know, the, under the umbrella of God. <clears throat> so I have to take care of her. So that's that's something that, uh, that I'm um, very passionate about is, you know, uh, taking care of her and, and taking care of the, the folks who, who mostly need it, you know, the health care and stuff. So. That's, that, that, I mean, Jesse, that's a lot, dude. That's a job in itself, bro, for real. Like that, that, I mean, that definitely, I mean, she's your wife, but I mean, people, you, you don't really realize how much, uh, you know, how much work and how much time and how much, you know what I mean? You got to have a lot of patience. There's a lot to going into taking right. care of somebody yeah, like that, man. Um, Jesse, so, you know, you watch some of my shows, bro. And, and um, I, if, if this is your first time tuning in, you're tuning in on Jesse's behalf. Welcome. Um, I've been doing this every Wednesday since COVID started. So we're on week 20 something. Uh, I stopped counting a long time ago, and uh, me and Jesse, we 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 kind of we go way back, dude. We go back about, let's see, two thousand and Six. no, 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 I wasn't here. I wasn't here. Yeah. It would have been two thousand and like twelve or two thousand thirteen. I put I. So I mean, almost six, seven years okay. that that, I, that I've known you, um, and uh, you know, I met him in a time of my life. 
where I was still on active duty, as a matter of fact, yeah, when, I, when I met you. Yeah. yeah. You're getting ready to uh, retire. Yeah. I was about, about getting ready to retire and, and, and transition to a, to a different part of my life. And I want to tell you, man, hombre, hombre, you helped me a lot with that, bro. Hallelujah. You know, um, God was, was not on my priority list. Definitely was not in my priority list. Um, you know, and it, it was in my priority list. And my wife used to get me all the time with it. You know, we were overseas doing stuff. God was there. Amen. Men and I would come back. Amen. You know, it was Sunday all day football. My wife would take the kids to church. You know, and you see it all the time. I mean, I grew up. That, that's how I grew up. I mean, my dad. My dad was a Catholic, but. He, he he never he never really went to church, you know what I mean? My mom's the one that got us through all our sacraments and and got us to church. Um and I think uh and I'm not going to say a lot, but but that that's that's uh you see that in a lot of families. That, well, that's a, it's, a, it's a very common common thing where the man is like, you know, stays away well, from the I, church. I, I was part of that. Uh we had our children, of course they're grown men now. We had our children in a, in this day um, um Holy Rosary Catholic school. Uh I would go to church, and I wanted to be out of there, brother, by right by noon. I was rushing out because I had two things I had to do. First, I had to stop by the stop and go and pick up a 12-pack and make kickoff, and, and, and I would do it. You know, So I would miss the whole, the whole um, um, reason for being in church because I was looking constantly looking at my clock, constantly looking at my clock. Like, come on, man. You're, you know? you're on my so, time. I'm, I'm, I'm being real with men today. Come on. <laughs> there's nothing more important than family and I'm talking about your immediate family yes hermanos y hermanas you know we, we, we love family and our parents and tios and tias and you know abuela and, and, and all that and we're supposed to but there is nothing more important than the children and the, the wife that God Almighty has entrusted you with Nothing more important because we as men, we are um, constantly teaching. There's, there's two types of teaching, direct teaching and indirect teaching. A direct teaching is going to be, uh, me let me home and take you fishing, and this is the way you put the hook on the, um, you know, the, the, the worm on the hook. So you teach them directly. Indirect teaching is when daddy loses his job, and there's finances that are, that, that are you know, um, there's trouble in the house because it's finance and stuff. And how dad is, is uh, coming home frustrated and angry and taking it out on mom, or is that coming home still full of joy, even though everything's going on? Because our children sit back and they watch us, and they say, okay, man, this is the way it's supposed to be to be a man. I'm saying that because of the hook foot, football thing. Mm -hmm. I'm a cowboy fan, bro. I mean, I, I honestly, man, I'm to the max, man. I know, I you see your shirt. I have to wear blue because stuff. <laughs> I went blue all the way out down for the November 3rd and también este for the Dallas Cowboys. But anyway, este, I'm, a, I'm a Cowboy fan, so I've learned to balance that. Pero I, it un tiempo that, that, well, there was no balancing. It was all para acá. Give me, give me. I got you. That just a bit ago. I got you. And, and folks, um, if, you're, if you're sitting back in your chair right now and you're looking at my show and you're like, oh, no. <laughs> Bumper's talking about God and church, and I mean, we already we. I mean, Jesse's already deep. We have, we're not even ten minutes into the show, and he's already getting deep. And that's kind of what I, what uh, when I spoke to him, that's kind of what I wanted to bring um, to my audience. Uh, I wanted I wanted you guys to to uh, maybe get a little get a little taste of of what I've gotten to know from him over the years. Um, he, he's definitely brought me closer to the Lord um, in, in all kinds of ways. And uh, I think in today's, in today's world right now, Jess, I think, you know, it's missing. I've said it before in my shows. I think, I think God is missing from a, from a, you know, from a lot of things. And, and I think if, if we would make it, you know, our focus, I think a lot of things would, would change on it, on its own. I mean, you you, yes, you know absolutely. what I mean? Yes. And uh, so, you know, having you here, have you guys ever just been around somebody? And 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 again, I, I'm 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 patting this guy on the back, and not because he's next to me, because I'm I'm being I'm being 100% real with my viewers. Have you just ever been around somebody who just? I'll, I'll tell you like this, Jess. The first time that I met you, 
You had a strong personality. And I, and I was an active duty, you know, Mass Sergeant E8 in the United States Marine Corps, you know, with 20, 20 years in. And and when I when I came around you, you just you just had a you had the alpha personality, which you know, being a marine, I, I I've been around my, my my whole my whole life, um, and uh, but the, there was there was something weird, and when I say weird, it's not in a sense to where I want you guys to be like, okay, bro, no, I, I'm being honest with you, I, and and if you guys want to uh, talk on here. A chat on here and, and tell me if you've if you felt this before but there is a few men that i'll tell you that since i have i have retired and and kind of uh gone back to the church and gone you know bring my family back to church and and do the right things and stuff there, there's a handful of men not even not even there's maybe two or three that the minute that they get around you the hairs on your arm stand up. I, I mean, no, I, I'm being real. Just this, this is my show. I'm, I'm being real, and and this is this is a this is a, a test. A, a, a what do you call it to you, man? You know, uh, I tell people, look, look, there is there are some people that can just come around, and they sent. It's it's more like their energy. I think you you feed off of people's energy. Like the minute you meet somebody, I, I've seen it, and and the reason I say that is because. I put men around you in a, in a way that you don't know. But then, and then they come back to me and they're like, hey, bro. <laughs> and I say, what do you mean? What, 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 do, you, what do you mean? What, what, what's wrong with them? Bro, I, I felt, I said, your hair stand up on your arms? He said, yeah. That's good okay. Job, well, I said, what's wrong? He's like, man, he just started talking to me like he knew me my whole life. You know, and... and you know, there's some people that can feed just off of a little bit of conversation. They can, they can, they're really good at it. You know what I mean? You can start judging people and kind of trying to help them and whatever, for whatever reason. But that's something about you, bro. I don't know if you know that. I'm sure people have told you that. But, but there, there is, there is a few people that I know that do that. And you're one of them. Well, you know, gracias. Uh, uh, it's not me. Um, um, it's, it's the power of the Holy Spirit. You know, uh, to God be all glory, all glory first. Primeramente Dios. Um, so it, it's nothing special about me, um, other than just you know you know being submissive to to God and the Holy Spirit. But I'm, I'm going to say something about the first time that I met you, and and you said something real unique right now, real key because you said about the Alpha, um, Minister Cruz Rodriguez. Yes. <laughs> Great man. man. He's awesome. And yeah. In fact, he, he, he's, he's, no, he's, he's, he's watching. Awesome, he's on right now. I love you, boy. That, that's that's my, my minister. I, I love this guy. Well, he's introduced me before, and um, and he says it like it is. You know, when, when I first made, uh, met him, I didn't like him. <clears throat> well, and I got used to that. I kind of laugh about it. The last time that he introduced me, which was, um, I think, the, the last retreat that we had, as they, um, he introduced me, I was going to give a talk or a teach, and I forgot what it was. But he changed it around a little bit, and he said it as it really is. He said, when I first met him, I hated him, you know, and, and I laugh because he's not the first person to tell me that. As the, my personality is my personality, and, and we, we spoke about that just real briefly the other day, and, and I'm going to touch on that a little bit. But what, what I'm going to say about when I first met you, um, you were getting ready to retire. I forgot how long it had, you know, you already had, you know, spoke about retiring and stuff, and, and it was real cold when we were up in uh, Marion, Texas. Mm -hmm. And, and Bumper got us to, um, uh, you know, through his contacts and all, two big uh, army tents or whatever they're called. Easy, Marine Corps oh, tents. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> the uh, the uh, Marine Corps tents. They, they were all nice, man. So, you know, we when I got there, I went back, they were already erected, and that's, those things are huge, man. And that's what Robert Duarte, my, my, my boy, man, you know, Robert Duarte, he loves God. He's got an awesome mission going on right now. Anyway, as then... I told Robert, meet up the one up here in the top. We're going to use that for the, the, the directors and stuff. And if we need to, if it rains and stuff, we'll throw stuff in there. And we have room. You know, anything that, that cannot get wet, we're going right. to throw it in there. And the other one, uh, <clears throat> we're going to use that as our chapel slash us there where we give our talks. So they're ready up. And um, Robert, you know, and, and he looks at me and says, uh, hey, bro, uh, Bumper's on his way up the hill. 
to where we were at, you know, the directors. I said, okay. And he says, Jess, he's on his way up the hill. I said, okay. And he says, okay, he just shook his head. And I wasn't understanding what he was telling me. So when Bumper walks in into the tent, he's got all his gear. <laughs> he's okay, man. Where do I, uh, where, where, where am I putting my bunk at? But I'm paraphrasing it. Yeah. And I looked at him, man, straight in his eye. Listen to these folks. I looked him straight in his eye and I said, down the hill with the, with the rest of the retreatants. And he looked at me and he said, you're joking, right? I said, no, bro, I need your leadership down there. And he gave me this look. It wasn't like, excuse the expression. It was that pinche Jesse look. <laughs> and he said, all right. And he kind of walked up and looked at me again. And, and I just stood there. And when he went out, he went, you know, he went down with the rest of the retreatants. Robert looked at me and said, look, let me, let me explain something to you, Robert. I got to teach you. I'm teaching you something here, son. Bumper is a Marine, and he understands authority. He understands submission. Whether he likes it or not, he understands how to submit. He understands that there's, that there's a, a, an authority in place, and there's a, 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 things are done you know, in, in a certain fashion. He's going to be okay. Now, you were very humble. And I say that man, with my heart, man. Because when I knew I had to go down the hill sometime and face you. And it was like if nothing took place, man. And you've never, ever as the, uh, spoke wrong to me till this day. You never held that against me that I know of. You never held that against me or anything like that. So that's a testament to, to the man of, of God. First of all, man of God that he is. And it's a testament to, to the, uh, uh, what the Marine Corps did for you in your life because you understood stuff, you know. Yeah. Uh, but th that was a, a one heck of a retreat, man. But to no, dude, in, that, in that tent. That, that, <laughs> that, that whole, I mean, if a tent could come off the ground, yeah. we got that tent off the ground, I promise you that. There was, there was heat in there. Uh, you know, but Jess, I mean, that, that, you brought something. I mean, you're right. Uh, I remember going down there. And then Robert kind of came behind me. He's like, "Hey, you all right?" I said, "I'm, I'm good." Dude. What, to, what group you want me to, to lead? You know, I'm, I'm down. And uh, it, it was, uh, it was cool, man. I mean, can, can we? It's not like the axe. We can talk about that. Can retreat, talk about right? yeah. So, so that retreat and, and, was. And the reason why? Because it's changed every every camp. We call it camp. Every camp, every retreat, we changed. We changed it up. Okay. So, so this one was cool. This guy next to me came up with an idea to where we, we literally. So, you know. We go on this retreat, and, and they they put in the they put in the flyer, fishing, <laughs> camping. So you're thinking, man, guys, good guys, weekend, <laughs> go out there and get some fishing, talk. Maybe we'll talk a little, you know, a little 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 bit of Jesus and 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 and, and whatnot. But dude, it, it, the, the fishing's like th this much, <laughs> and everything else is this much. Which which, I mean, it, it was a very powerful weekend, but. Uh, I re I remember you know being down there, and I think what the coolest thing that you did, and I could relate to it, being being a marine, the coolest thing that you did was like, hey, come here, leaders, go get your cooler, boom, this is your cooler. Everybody has the exact amount of eggs. Everybody has the amount exact amount of chorizo, yeah. of of uh, sandwich stuff. We have uh, chicken, and and some other stuff. Uh, everybody has the exact amount. If y'all want to have a buffet, I remember you saying, y'all want to have a buffet tomorrow? Eat it all, but you're going to be hungry the next two yeah. days. Yeah. So we, as as men, uh, as a group of men, we had to to literally sit there and it was part of, it, it, it was part of, it was part of something he was doing. Right. You know what I mean? Because everything is for a reason. Right, correct. And, and that's just one thing that stuck in my head. Like we had to, we had to sit there and say, okay, we're going to have breakfast tomorrow. Everybody has two eggs. You know, we, we kind of broke it down. Right, right. You, we had to keep our fire going because if right. you only had so much time to cook. I mean, it, it, it was it was pretty, it was military. Uh, yeah. Uh, the, you had it broken down military style in a sense for me. Like I could relate well, to and, it. And, and, and it, it's, it was written like that, Bumper, because me that. <clears throat> Come on, Jesus. God has blessed me in a manner, man, that, that, uh, 
That's unbelievable. He's blessed me with, with um, um, being able to speak to men, speak to young people. That's the, um, I was around uh, solid men of God who took me under the wing. You know, um, Henry Bernal took me in. Juan Valdez took me in. That's the uh, pastor, Charles Flowers from CBC, a Christian boot camp took me in. I mean, th these men taught me. I was under, the, at the time in the churches, the pastor Rick Hawkins, the teachings, and it's just it's unbelievable. So when God gave me this vision, um, I didn't know what to call it. And, and I'm sitting, uh, we, we had an uh, Acts retreat. I was co-directing it, and it was two weeks before the event. And I'm sitting down, we're in a meeting, team meeting, and I'm facing everyone. And instead, the Holy Spirit starts speaking to me. He says, write these names down. So I start writing seven names, I wrote it down. And then he says, you need to start this. And I said, Lord, I, I don't know what, you know, I don't know what's going on. I've never done this before. <clears throat> Excuse me. And then he a scholar and, and um, student, honor, integrity, nurture, knowledge. He, he gave me all that. And then he, 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 he started showing me the, the, the things that I learned at CBC. I, I was a, um, um, a TI, a training instructor in the Christian boot camp. I have no military background whatsoever. <laughs> and, and he was Boy Scouts. Because, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> he was Boy Scouts. Man. I have no military background. So Pastor Flowers, he, he was in the military, ex-military airport. So pastor, and, and you know, he, he took me in. He asked me, I want you to pray about something. I said, okay. And, I went in there. I didn't have no training. It's just like then. You, you, you're anointed. You can do it. Learn it. Right. Orale. I went with it. So there was a lot of components that, that I used coming from CBC into Think Ministries. A lot of components that I used from the background that I had with Henry Bernal. And, and a lot from when Juan Valdez and, and, and Pastor Rick Hawkins, the teachings and stuff like that. So it was kind of like a, a, a several ministries that, that, that the Lord instilled it to my spirit and said, okay, now let me shake you up and go run with it and do what it is that I need you to do. Um, and that's how, that, that's like, now everything that you're saying, if I, if I may, what he said about, about the, uh, the, everyone had their own coolers and stuff and, and equal amount of food and drink and all. A lot of men, come on, Jesus. A lot of men have never barbecued without getting smashed while getting stoned, while drinking a beer. And I'm not going to talk about saying drinking is bad. I'm not even going there. I'm talking about getting smashed and, and, and getting bien, bien destorneados, torneos and stuff. A lot, there are some men who have, don't know how to barbecue because that wasn't around, you know, to teach them. Yeah. There are no, some men that, that are very dominant. Hey, I'm going to do all the cooking. Well, part of our ministry, if you recall, was, you know, everyone takes turns cooking, but as well, everyone takes turns washing their own dish. Yeah. No. And drying it up, you yep. know what I mean? Because a lot of men are very dominant. So you know, we were blessed to have uh, you know to have all these components, you know, together that that, uh, that God just said, done it. And the scripture says, where there is vision, there's provision. And um, the vision was there, and He provided everything we needed to this day. You know, so now that that was a that was a a great. I mean, that that's something that uh, you, you need some tissue. Yeah, brother. Okay. Uh, maybe, maybe my wife's listening, and she'll bring us some, <laughs> some tissue. And, and not, I'm going to use a curtain. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but uh, real quick, man, we're going to go to some of the some of the the comments, man. Uh, let's see. Uh, Jesus Christ is the answer. Uh, Crucito Cruz said, "Love both of you." And uh, he's, you get get some some people watching that don't usually watch. Shout out to David Reese. Oh yeah, he's out there. David. Man. What's up, Dave? Um, but just you know, in today's world, man, uh, there's not enough of this. There, there, there's there's so much. Uh, and and I mean, I'm sure you you you've been guilty of it. I've been guilty of the machismo. Oh, amen. You know, yes, ma amen. machismo is, is is huge, uh, and not just in our culture. I think in our culture, we we it, it's it's like uh, it's instilled in you from a little kid. Right, that's the norm. That that's the normal. And right. I and I, I remember I think I got that from you one time when you were talking about, um, uh, you were talking about like growing up, like you know what I mean, like your your dad, you you know, 
he could cuss you out or whatever, and you had it, you had it taken. If you would cry, then you know he would, he, oh, he would yeah, just, yeah. You, you know what I mean? I'm so sorry. No, that's all right. Um, and and uh, that's it. And, and it's not just our culture. Right, I think right. it's it's a it's a lot of cultures. And um, in today's world, man, it's just it, it's it's something that that like the 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 world's gravitating to it. You, you know what I mean? I mean, you see it every day in the news. And we're not talking just about the presidential race. I'm talking about in general. You know what I mean? In the movies. I mean, everything is is based off of machismo. And, you know, uh, I think me and my wife, we we try to do a good job of raising our kids to just be humble in a sense to where, you know what I mean? You you, you don't, you don't, it's good to have machismo when you need it. Right. Absolutely. But but, but you have to know when to let those reins go, at, at least with our boys. And I think I think my daughters have have seen enough of me, um, and and been around you know things like that where they they hopefully they look for a man, you know what I mean? They're gonna they're gonna search for a man who who is uh, they're gonna search for a man <clears throat> who represents dad. I get out me. You know, I want to meet you. I see you on I see you on his all the time. As I mean, you know, I love your spirit. Really? I just want to tell you, God blessed you, and Thank and you. God. Ha- my God, God has some wonderful blessings. Thank you. This generation you're will not be the same. <laughs> this generation will not be the same because you're in it. Step into your generation. Step into your calling and embrace the woman of God. Amen. Thank you Hallelujah. so much. Hallelujah. I've been wanting to meet her. That's Lanita. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> After that word that I gave me, that <laughs> check it this out, bro. Right. This right. is a real show. <laughs> <laughs> oh man! He asked for some tissue. We, we shot. <laughs> and, uh, not even partial thing is empty, bro. We get the way we end. Hey, and you know what? Look right there behind that where it says <laughs> box of tissue. Uh, but you know, oh as, as man, that's saying, good. Our daughters are going to to look for a man that that, that represents daddy. If, if, if you, you affirm your daughter, she's going to look for a husband that affirms her. If, if you cuss your daughter, or, or, or better yet, if you cuss your wife, your daughter is watching this. And, 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 and the message being sent to her saying, hey, this is the, what a real man is. So, you know, when it, someone treats me well, I'm uncomfortable with it. But when someone curses me, it, it must be right. Now the son is watching us. Remember what I said, direct teaching, indirect teaching. Mm-hmm. The son is watching us. He said, hey, when I get angry, I give my wife a beat down or I cuss her or, you know, I'm, I'm going to say, well, you know, what have you to her to bring her down because I don't have to affirm her. Okay, you're so macho. Gotcha. Uh, what you said a bit ago, uh, growing up, uh, uh, I, I got into an argument with my brother uh, and we were young, man. I, I think I was like about I don't know, 12, maybe, 13 years old. And my brother and I, my older brother, you know, we got a heated argument, whatever. He made me cry. He was a little bit bully. <laughs> you know, then, as dad. He made me cry. But my dad was on his way to the store. And my mom and my dad were arguing in a heated argument. And uh, for some reason, I had to go with my dad. And, of course, he's honking, like, hurry up. And hurry. he's already angry with mom. And he's honking and stuff. And but I, I come outside being in an argument with my brother, and uh, I get in, I'm crying. I got in, I said, I'm doing it, I'm crying. Hey, man, you know my brother? So I don't have to say his name, but my brother, so-and-so, did. he looked at me, and he said, just like this, yeah, guy at the sequel of sales hotel. And I looked at him, I said, my God, my hero is telling me that if I cry, I'm weak. So therefore, you know, I said, I, I, I can't be that because if I cry, this is what I am. So, so therefore, it made me, kind of made me a little rough, made me tough inside. Now, I'm not talking about being rough and strapped. I'm, I'm talking about inside my feelings and stuff like that. I wouldn't cry until one day. <laughs> until one day, <clears throat> Jesus Christ found me. You see, we have a habit of saying, when I found Jesus, Jesus has never been lost. 
When one day Jesus found me, and he grabbed me, and he put me on his lap, and he just caught every tear that I had. He just caught it. And then he blessed my every prayer that I ever had with my very own tears. So we become macho because this is something that, that becomes a norm to us. This is what we know how to do. When we become, when we're tested to, to, uh, to make change in our lives, it becomes uncomfortable. Change is uncomfortable sometimes, but, oh, it it's, but, it's, but it's also a powerful thing, you know. Um, guys, if you guys are watching, I just put in the, the comments, uh, that's my phone number. It's connected to our system. Uh, if, if you have some comments or you have some questions, uh, whatever it might be, uh, Jesse, he, he's, he's guaranteed me that he, he'll, he'll answer if he wants. And, it, and if he doesn't, he'll, he'll just let you know, hey, I'm not going to answer that question. So uh, my phone number is area code 949-456-7576. That's 949-456-7576. There will be a two-cent charge. No, there's not a two-cent charge. Hey, I'm not getting paid for this, guy. <laughs> <laughs> oh man! I'm trying to man. I'm not even getting gas money for this one, bro. <laughs> Dude, you know, people have come here from church, from St. Paul. They they come over here. They invited the kids to, do, you know, they did the personal invites and everything. They come in. They're just like, bro. You must really love that church, dude, because you drive me. That, that's what there, I was thinking. There's like 30 churches between yeah. here and there, but I I, I love our community. Yeah, uh, I, I love it there. Um, <clears throat> But Jesse, you know, I have a lot of friends, dude, who, because of you, I've learned to, to talk and, 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 and let it be okay. Uh, one, I have no, I, I, I've cried on here, you know what I mean? And I, I mean, being a Marine growing up, I never saw my, I never saw my grandfather cry. I never saw right. my dad cry. Right. I never saw. You know, any anybody that I saw as a hero, like you said, or or as an adult role, a, a male role model, they didn't cry. It, it was it wasn't it wasn't part of uh, uh, it wasn't part of who we were. You know what I mean? And we cried. We cried in our room. Nobody could hear us. You know what I mean? But uh, you know, and it goes to as far as like when we fall down and get hurt. Yeah, you know, yeah. the, the mom's ready to run and, and pick you up and love you and right. sana sana colita rana. Right. You know, right? But the dad, the no, 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 leave him alone, leave him alone, leave him alone, let him get up, let him, you know what I mean? It, right. It's just, it, it starts at, at a young age. Um, but I've come to a point in my life to where I'm okay, man. I, I can, I can talk to anybody and if I end up crying, I end up crying. Amen. You know what I mean? It doesn't, it doesn't make me no less, it does not make you no less of a man if, if your eyes start sweating. Uh, that's what I might say sometimes, like, hey, my, you're making my eyes sweat. Right. You know, right. uh, but just tonight, you know, I, I told you I was going to poke at you a little okay. bit and, 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 I, and okay. try to get you try to get you uncomfortable, which is which is really probably really hard to do. Um, but, um, <clears throat> you know, you grew up here, you grew up in a and we didn't even get we didn't even get to that. But we'll, we'll touch a little bit on that. You know, you, 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 you grew up here in San Antonio, your, your whole right. West Side. Uh, well, yeah, not not in the state, in the center of the West Side. It was more Culebra Loma Park, but on this side of Loma Park, uh, which is Culebra Thirty Six. Um, initially, um, I come from a family of nine: mm -hmm. seven brothers, two sisters. One, the, the six brothers and two sisters. With with my with our uh, eighth brother passing away, he was the firstborn. So of course, we, we never got to meet him. That's that. But when I was born, I, I lived on the off of Woodlawn and. And um, uh, well, I guess Maiden Lane, Hillcrest, around that area. And then I think in fourth grade, we moved on to Continental Street, which is um, four blocks, five blocks from Culebra and, and um, Maiden Lane, around that area. So it, it, was it considered West Side? Yes, absolutely. Well, put it this way, so we didn't, I'm sorry, put it this way, so we didn't have uh, sidewalks. So it is West Side. <laughs> we, didn't, we didn't have sidewalks, man, okay? We yeah. played football on the street. We played baseball, touching... Touching the, the car for bass. Got you. Okay. Yeah, so, yeah. yeah. So you know, yeah, I, I kind of grew up the same way, and in, 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 but in, in a small town environment. But uh, just the reason I say that is because that, that's your, um, you know, if, if you take the 
if I, if I take this Bible out of your hand, right. right? I take the words from your mouth and I see you walking at me. You, you, you're Saranto all the way. I mean, you, you, you wore the fedora. You got the, you know what I mean? You just got the, uh, like a, not a, not a hundred percent pachuco, but just enough. You know what I mean? That you, you, like you grew up in the old school days right. uh, of, of where, like my dad, and yeah. kind of like in a sense, like my dad. And, and you, 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 you carry yourself like that. But what was great for me to see as a person was I saw that. But then you had a switch. You turn that switch and you were like, like that just went away. You know what I mean? Because you, 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 you judge people. We, 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 we say that we don't. Yeah, but we you, do. see, you see somebody, you're like, oh, dude, the dude's got tattoos all on his arms, you know, whatever. You, you, you just automatically assume that he, he's that type of lifestyle. And seeing you, like if I saw you during Fiesta or, you know, I'm, I'm seeing you standing in front of a stage with a cold beer. Right. Jamming to some to some conjunto music. I right. mean, that's just that's what I got from you. But dude, it was awesome just to see that what I thought you were, you you really weren't. Right, and and and, and, and that's what I what, what I meant earlier about her by by saying that, that I'm, I'm blessed because let, let me tell you, man, I, I'm not a man that that speaks as they with very elaborate words and stuff. I could understand them. And if I don't understand the word, I just continue talking to you and, and ooh, okay, I know what he's talking about. And then when I'm on, a, you know, I'm on my own, I, I go look up that word. Go, well, what, what exactly was he saying? As the, or I could, I could speak as the Guna um, Onda, you know, because that's, a, that's just a tool that, that God allowed. Uh, all right, let's go there. Now. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah, Lord. <laughs> when you're born, okay, as the... When you're born, you're born with a personality that's instilled in you already, even before you grow up. The personality, the, the, the breath of God, but he blew that into you, okay? Because you're purposed. You have a purpose in life. A purpose we don't, we cannot, even if we try, we cannot choose because that's God's purpose given to us, instilled in us. We, we could choose our wives, who we want to marry. We could choose our universities we want to go to, our careers that we want, the car that we want to buy, the, the, the beautiful home that, that, that we live in, and, and our friends. We could choose that. But purpose is given to you by God Almighty. Okay? And, and you, you stumbled into this purpose. You just, like, all of a sudden, you, you, you stepped into it. Like, oh, my God, I'm in my purpose. Okay? I believe this, that when God, when I was born, when God, God formed me and, and he blew his, his life, his breath, his bonus, come on, Jesus, he blew it into me. As that was purpose for, for such a time as this. I, I, I could speak to men, because we, our ministry, we do a lot of it. You know, we, 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 of course, right now with the pandemic, man, it, it, it's hard to, to kick this off. Right. But we could still do it, but we need to use wisdom, and we'll speak about that later on, about wisdom. It's the... Um, for me to, to be able to lead men that are coming into a retreat, that are coming rough sometimes. I mean, Re real rough. Rough. Real rough. You know, raw and stuff. You know, yeah. Okay, I, if, if my spirit was so gentle, I couldn't be able to do the things I need to do. So, like, okay, I got to feel you first. And, and uh, you know, I got to speak your language better. I mean, and I'm not talking about vocabulary. Like, I'm talking about those models. Okay, what are you about? Okay, let me get to know you for just a few seconds because you're not the only one I have to do that with. I have to do that with other 20 men or 15 or whatever, how many men mm. we have. Apart from, from, the, from the, the, the team. Team, exactly. As they, and then we have to be able to switch it quickly. But you, the, the, the purpose or the God's given you, that's your personality, your persona. Okay? And you wind up stepping into that. Uh, as I mentioned to you the other day, uh, um, I uh, uh, never played sports, organized sports, with the exception of football in high school. As they, I always wanted to play baseball, but uh, times were rough when it happened, man. You know, we had large families stuff that had injuries and stuff, and really couldn't afford, you know, beauty and form and stuff, and registrations and stuff like that, man. That was a rancho, you know, growing up. As they, so I always wanted to, but I didn't understand it. I didn't know how to play. I don't, even to this day, I don't know the full rules of, of uh, uh, basketball, as I do football. Okay. Really? I'm, I'm telling you, man. I know make it in the, I mean, you know, dribble and stuff like that. Hey, dude, what, what do you do? Why do you 
Hey, well, you're being real, no? Yeah, I'm, I mean, I'm telling you. But bro, you probably you. watched Spurs your whole life, and you just yeah, you never yeah, even know. Yeah, stumbling it, David, going in there. So <laughs> the, 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 the whole deal, you know, you um, um I'm, I'm wanted to play these sports, but uh, of course I couldn't. Well, as I started getting older with my children, I started to coach them. Um, we won the city basketball team. I, I think the, the score was 42, and we were city champions. Is then uh, I just sold it to them, you know, and, and as if I knew what I was doing. Mm-hmm. Now watch. During the time, I'm going to get real here. Because I'm like, okay, I am. Thank you, Lord. <laughs> because I know I'm speaking to someone. Or two or three. <clears throat> During my coaching years, early on, before having Christ in my life, I would coach and chase the... Um, <laughs> the cheerleaders' mothers or the football players' mothers or, or the mothers that would, would look up to you as a coach. My son, little Johnny, man, he's behaving like this, he's behaving, and, and they look for you to, to speak to little Johnny because husband is not involved, dad's not involved in their lives. So I would do these things. You know, I'm not proud of it, but I, I will never shy away from speaking the truth because I need to speak to someone. But you're being real, man. And, and, and this is the things that I would do. Now, stepping in, when, I, when Jesus Christ found me, bro, and when he cleansed me and I cried, he felt a lot of missing. Forgive me, God, for the things that I've done. Wash my spirit, God, set me free, Lord. When he did that, now he says, okay, look, man, do you remember you like to coach kids? I'm washing you, mijo. I'm sanding the rough edges. I'm sanding them off of you. I'm sending them off to me home. And I'm going to put you now, now you're going to coach men's lives. See, I stepped into that person and I didn't even realize what the devil was messing with me, you know, enticing me to do things like that with these women. You know, he tainted and all that stuff, you know, and sin. He throws it, hold it right there. Hold it right there. Don't, don't lose your spot. Hold on. Dave, can you hear us? Yeah, I can hear you. Here. Okay, man, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to let, uh, just stay on hold right here. We can hear you. Just stay on the phone. I'm going to let just finish right here. I'm going to get you on. You got it, bro. All right. So, you know, I, I asked the Lord, okay, you know, you know, cleanse me, you know. And, and, and the Lord says, I'm going to put you, I'm, I'm, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to put you here now. And, and then he reminded me, do you remember when you were coaching live? I mean, you're coaching football and baseball, you know what you were doing? Yes, Lord. He says, now you're coaching, man. You know, I stumbled into that purpose, man. You know, I didn't choose it, bro. I didn't choose it. But I stumbled into it. That, that's that's powerful. I mean, I, we we've kind of we've spoken on this yeah, before, yeah. you know, and 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 he broke it down for me too. He's like, "Hey, dude, how many t- how many shows you've done? How many you know this, that, and the other?" And uh, you know, I stumbled onto doing this. I mean, I, I started getting drunk on here. That's how I started doing is eating some raw meat and getting drunk. Um, but we have a brother in Christ, uh, Jesse, that that called in. Uh, Mr. David Reese. I love you, David. And uh, David, can you hear us both? Yes, sir. All right, cool, man. Hey, uh, thanks for calling in, bro. Thanks for listening. Uh, I, I saw your comment, and I definitely just I wanted you to call in, man, because I want people to get uh, a taste of what we're talking about. You know, because me and Jess, we're here, we're live, um, and we can say what we want because we're we're in front of the camera. But you're somebody <laughs> watching, and and you you've been you've been in this man's presence before. Um, could you could you maybe talk a little bit like you know your comment here was uh you know the the authenticity and rawness you would would uh would get my attention and some men need to hear a message a certain way from a certain perspective and that's what I told Jesse like he he mentioned that he has a a, a soft uh uh what, what was the word you said not a soul but your your uh personality your personality was and it's not it, it, it it's not it's great because it's like I said, he's he he is exactly what you just said. There's some men who just need to hear it a certain way. And if a man comes to you and like, hey man, pat you on the back, hey, you know, it, it's okay. No, 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 no. This is more of like a kick in the ass. But wake up. Could would you agree, Dave? No, definitely, definitely. I know uh, when I first met uh, Jesse, you know, it was different. Um, a lot of ways he has a, a lot of he shares a lot of similarities as, as my dad you know um uh, god bless my dad mm-hmm. lost him some years ago mm-hmm. and you know one one thing that i that i've always he has a lot of similarities with my dad in the way that uh 
my dad was, you know, my dad, he was, you know, he's from the West side and, and he had a, a rough, a rough upbringing and stuff. He's a Vietnam vet. So he, you know, he came from a lot of different sides, you know, there was a lot of discipline in the house. Um, and then there was a lot of, uh, you know, he was a Pachuco. So there was a lot of machismo in the house, you know, he was that dad, like, kind of like Jesse's, you know, he, uh, he didn't take crap. And, and if, if we were, if we were uh, acting like girls, like he might have said once in a while, you know, he definitely let us know, you know, man up, you know, uh, amarte los huevos and, and, and keep going. You know what I mean? <laughs> that's, that's right. I mean, no, you, you, and, you're right, Dave. That, I, I, that's what we were talking about earlier. And, and uh, Dave, you know, for, for, for the viewers watching, the, the, the guy calling in, he has, a, he has a big family. Dave, Dave is a big family, and, and I've always loved, I've always told him, you know, I love that he, him and his wife have a, have a huge family and, and they're, you know, they, they're all, they've always been, since I've been there, since I've been in St. Paul, you, you've always been involved, bro. Um, and, and, uh, I w you know what, you know, I was going to ask you, I, I want to say a conversation I had with you maybe during Jesse's retreat was that you didn't used to sing before you didn't sing before we did retreats and stuff. Oh, that's right. Huh. You know, uh, I always loved to sing, you know, back in high school, I was in band and stuff like that, but never really had the opportunity to sing, loved to sing, um, you know, it was kind of always a little, I guess, held back on it, you know what I mean? But, all, you know, growing up, listening to the oldies on my parents' barbecues, the Hano music growing up, so you learn all these songs and you sing them and stuff like that, so I always had a passion for singing, but nowhere uh, that I would really do it, you know? Um, I'd say after uh, my fresh retreat, you know, I got intrigued, of course, with the help of a great brother Jesus, Jesus uh, Ramirez, yeah. mm -hmm. you know, Good guy. he uh, he's got a way of of, of seeing some, something in somebody and uh, taking them under their wing and really molding them in, into a uh, something special. Uh, along with the you know the grace of God, um, it was it was implanted to me. I'd say by you know God planted the seed in him and he planted it in me to to uh, to get into that you know, um, and it's really been. Uh, a life changing experience uh, in itself as far as music ministry. Um, it's really, man, it's, it's really done great things for me, you know, spiritually, um, really, really great things, man. Sorry. Um, but, uh, you know, God has worked his way through music. Uh, and I, I've told Jesse this and man, there's thousands of songs that, and I got a song for every situation when it comes to, yeah. you know, when I'm either down and out or, you know, feeling great or, or whatever it might be and um no man i really didn't i didn't to answer your question i really didn't didn't sing until until it got you know came to ministry um and you know it's even come further than that I'm, and i'm pretty sure you know as brothers y'all seen you know different situations and I, I can think back you know my first sneak retreat i you know i really didn't even sing too much then um um or or acts retreat you know and, and little, little by little, it's it's evolved, you know, into something great for me, uh, in the sense that you know, I, uh, I've um, I've come a long way, you know what I mean? I've come a long way, and music was a big part of it, like I said. Um, well, well, I used to see, one of the I used to sing. Go ahead, David. I'm sorry. I used to sing to uh, to sing a song al uh, alongside Jesus or, or the rest of the music ministry. And and sing the you know sing the notes and sing the lyrics if you would, and 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 get through songs, um, you know just as a ministry or, or in a choir at church maybe, um, but and that was the beginning you know now it's it's you know the, you everybody hears the, the words you know praise and worship you know I, I truly believe now that that it, it spiritually it's taking me to a different level to where now when I'm singing it I'm I'm all in man I'm emotional I'm um you know no I, definitely. I really sad that, I've heard, I know, I've heard people, you know, everybody's always said, you know, you hear a song and the, and the hairs lift up on the back of your, that's your, right. uh, your neck, you know, and it, it's evolved to a great thing to where it's a, it's a full, it's a full spiritual experience, you know, out of body almost sometimes. And through, through the grace of God, it's, it's allowed me to hopefully touch, you know, the hearts of a lot of men and, 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 you know, and, and do great things, you know, in his name. But um, when when uh, uh, David, when I first met David, uh, that's the year that I met Robert Duarte and, and uh, man, several eyes, man. That, that's when I co-directed the uh, with uh, Roger Medina, the actual mm -hmm. and the Lord had given me this uh, this this uh, the vision. As the, when Robert first walked in, and, and I've always said this: when Robert first walked in, 
you know, he, he walked in with with <laughs> with an entourage, <laughs> couldn't couldn't David and then uh, Oscar and, and there was I think about five or seven guys or something like that. And 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 one, one thing that I said to Eloy about Robert, I mean, I'm going to touch on David right now. One thing I said to Eloy about Robert was, we got to keep this guy because he's this day he's a bona fide leader. He leads without people follow him without he even realizing. Okay, David. <clears throat> when he came in, he came himself, a jolly guy. But Robert and David, they came in with rough edges. You know, r- rough edges. Yeah. And, and, uh, um, the like you were just came. talking about. Yeah, we were talking about earlier. Mm-hmm. With rough edges. And I said, man, these guys are leaders, man. It's not really funny. We just got to send. And I'm going to tell Eloy, you know, we got to send these guys. We got to send them, man. You know, because they, they, these are men of God, and, and I see it in them. They got it in them, and they just don't know how because we just don't. We don't know how to serve God, right? And so somebody gets us, and they they, they, they disciple. And the word disciple comes from the word discipline, okay? As they until they, they disciple us and show us how to how to us to serve God. You know what it is to be a man of God. What it is to, you know, that you know we should pray for our children before they wake up, stuff like that. And David and Robert and and, and a couple other men, Rudy. Rudy Guetta, it's it's very evident that they, they, they took to it. And now now look at him. You know. So. No, definitely. D- Dave, um hey dude, you 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 down a single bar or what? Híjole. Yeah, right on the spot, dog. What do you think? <laughs> you, you you got it or what? I want you to sing uh, something, you... David. Listen, bro. That is gonna touch I, I'm not talking about a praise. I want you to worship your God, man. Worship your God, man, who has pulled you out of the stuff, bro. That no one, nobody knows, like you and God know, what he's pulled you from. Because in your voice, bro, in your voice, man, chains will be broken. So as long as you sing under the anointing of the Holy Spirit. Can you do it, Dave? Híjole. <laughs> Put me on the spot, man. Yeah. That's how we do it on Wacky Wednesday, bro. <laughs> but you're used to that already because we always change things around in, in, in the ministry. <laughs> uh, where, wherever it takes you, that's where you, uh, you need to be, right? You, you, and you don't got to sing the whole song. Just sing me like one verse, man. Because there's, there's some songs that you can sing, bro, that make the hairs on your back of your neck stand up. <laughs> and you got to remember, you, 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 you know, grown men of all walks of life have felt that. So, I just thought I'd throw that out there. That. <laughs> I can appreciate that, man. Um, man, you know, you know, God's an amazing God. You know that we that we've been uh, we've been uh, able to serve. You know, right now, uh, shoot, I got to be hundred percent honest with you guys. You know, and I know y'all wouldn't have any other way. Um, I, uh, man, I, I really am going through some stuff personally right now. You know. So to uh, to see uh, and uh, to see your your post, I, I guess it was yesterday or the day before, mm-hmm. bumper you had, you had thrown out there, you know, uh, brother Jesse Wacky Wednesday this coming Wednesday, right? Yeah. And uh, and I be honest, I I kind of I I was like, man, that's cool. I'm looking forward to watching. You know, I want to see that. I miss my brothers and see Jesse. Talked to him actually briefly, maybe a couple weeks ago or something like that. And uh, and I was looking forward to this, you know. And I kind of forgot was here, uh, you know, we were making dinner and stuff like that. Uh, of course, over my phone, uh, actually, I put a reminder on there. I was like, oh, yeah, you know, get on there, start watching you guys and stuff. And, of course, as soon as you get on, you know, the, you know, start, uh, start speaking to me, if you would. You know what I mean? Yeah. And, uh, and it's like one of those things. God, God like, you know, like Jesse said earlier, he, he never leaves us, you know. We we walk away from him sometimes, um, and unfortunately, it's when you when you need him most is when you turn back to him, you know. Um, and uh, I find myself, you know, of course, always turning to music and certain songs and stuff like that, and going through some stuff here in my personal life, and uh, and so the one song that kind of speaks to me um, is "I Surrender," because every time I every time I falter, every time I feel myself walking away. Uh, I got to be honest with you, man. I, I, I end up feeling gotcha, man. I end up feeling real bad, you know, because um, I, I genuinely feel like I'm, I'm letting down my father, if you would. 
because I walked away and then like the prodigal son, every time I come back, he just welcomed me with open arms, you know, and he's never, he's never left me or forsaken me. He's here for me. And, uh, man, I'm telling you, I, I'm getting emotional right now because, because it, uh, I'll feel no other word, but gotcha, man. You know what I mean? Yeah, but so, David, David, I've always told you this, man, <clears throat> that can, can I be seen by the camera? Are we, are we seen here? Yeah, he, he, yeah. He, 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 put your hand here. But it, 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 off the Bible, it just. But yeah, I'm, I'm gonna show you all something. Can you see me, David? I can't see you. Okay. Because I'm but, on the phone. But I've, I've told you this before, David. Condemnation is of the devil. Conviction is of Jesus. Conviction is love. Condemnation is hate. When you, you only convicted one time, the conviction of the Holy Spirit says, Mijo, what are you doing? Mijo, what are you doing? I need you back. Condemnation <clears throat> puts a finger in your hand like this. He says, hey, Bumper, what are you doing? You going to go to church again, Bumper? Hey, Bato, what were you doing last night? Hey, Bumper, you know you're doing that how you're not supposed to be doing, Bumper? And then send her like, Ifa, brother, the linias, man. You know, you're beating your wife and all that stuff, man. You're, you're running around with other women. You can't go back to church, Rupert. That's condemnation. Where he keeps you, the devil wants to keep you down. I can't move from here. I'm not, I, I, I can't sing to God. Sure you can. Because the Holy Spirit comes and he says, look, let me remove that from you. My conviction to you is my love to you. Saying, vente para mijo. Come on back. Come on back, son. Man, Woo. so what you got, Dave? <laughs> like I said, I'm just seeing a couple of verses from the beginning, man. In this song, I surrender. It's one of those things. It's like when I, I say I feel like I walk away, and then when I come back, it's almost like I, I revert back to this song because I feel like I, I do too many times as a as a man, as a dad. Um, I uh, rely on my own transgressions, if you would. You know, I I, uh, I don't submit. I don't allow myself to submit because I think I have the answers. You know what I mean? Got you. Um, and, and so I turn back to this song, man. Um, like I said, I'm just going to sing a, a couple verses from the beginning, and, and uh, I look forward to, to doing this maybe maybe live someday for you, man. Um, That'd be awesome, so, bro. <laughs> so here we go, man. It's a by Hill song. Uh, <clears throat> excuse me, because it's been a while, but there you go, man. Here I am, down on my knees again, surrendering all, surrendering all. With arms stretched wide, I knew you hear my cry. Oh, man, sorry, dude. Sorry. I'm sorry, bro. I'm sorry. You're good, uh, bro. That, 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 that's, that beat my hairs on my, on my, my arms stand up, Dave. Um, Dave, I want to I wanna thank you, bro, for calling in because it, it takes a lot to call in and put yourself in, in the public's eye. You know what I mean? So, And then for you just to be, for me to throw you on the spot and sing, and you, you, you did it without even thinking about it man I, I really appreciate that and um you know uh if you i know you couldn't read the the comments but uh, i think it was my wife comments says thank you for all you do david especially for serving mass and for singing in my you you were the singer of my daughter's quinceanera with just uh just a phone call bro and i i know i thank you but he, he did the same thing my, my, my dad passed away and and i was so broken i mean i was broken robert and, and him were the day that my dad passed, were there at the house. I didn't even know they were there. That's how busted I was. Busted you were, yeah. And then speaking to him, I asked David, and I said, Dave, you know, I, I need someone to sing. He says, Jesse, I got it. And I said, but bro, you know I me, mean, once again, he says, I got it. So the day of the rosary, he walks in with Jesus Ramirez, David, as I think uh, the other brother's name, I, I keep forgetting his name, he plays guitar, and uh, Nick and Augie was there. Uh -huh. And, and I was a ble I was so blessed because he just he says I got it man that's how I, you know these are the type of cats man. yeah man no no, no definitely I mean like I said I Dave I called you and you were like dude I eat the same thing I got it bro just tell me where what time you want me there and uh, I, I I'll leave you with this Dave I remember I got a I got a a first cousin 
I love him. He, he, he might be watching. Uh, Georgie Cano, he's from Beville. Uh, he, he's a he's a minister. Uh, uh, he's a pastor at his church. And uh, you know, uh, I I think sometimes people, and not to throw religion in it, but in a sense, but uh, you know, Catholicism. They they think that it, it's just it's so structured and so old. But um, you know, if you've never been to our church, man, our music ministry is on another level. And I, I, I'll say that to, to anybody that wants to argue with me, bring it. Um, but with that being said, you know, my, uh, Dave sang it at uh, my daughter's quinceanera. And it was a Catholic mass. And after church, he, you know what a V-line is? Like he just came straight to me. My, my primo did. He's like, hey, what's up, dude? We sing those songs, bro. Y'all can sing those here? I said, well, what do you mean? Like I don't, I didn't ever think that you guys would sing songs like these because they were they were modern songs, you know. And uh, he's like, "Dude, that guy was something else." Yeah. So that was a testimony to you, Dave. I appreciate that, bro. And and we'll we'll keep you in our prayers, bro. Keep right. being you, dog. You know, we're we're always around, bro. We're great. a phone call away. You know, you're you're my plumber. You know, uh, <laughs> when I need a plumber, or not not even when I need a plumber. When I just got a question, there's two guys I call. I, I, I call him. And Eugene, they, they'll uh, give me the answers right away. They will allow, they'll tell me, hey, just do this and that. David, let me pray for you before we, we sign off with you, okay, bro? Are you there, David? Yeah. Padre, in the name of Christ Jesus, in Jesus' mighty name, God Almighty. Father God, you know where your baby stands. Father, you know God Almighty where he's at right now with you, Father God. You know his heart better than what he knows it, Lord. Father, I'm going to ask God Almighty in your spirit, God, that you would get your spirit, God Almighty, just blow that fresh breath into his nostrils once again. Blow that life into him once again, God Almighty. Give him that thirst, Father God, that only comes from you, that he would become a God chaser all over again. That he would use, Father God, the anointing that you blew into him, Lord, the day that you created him. That he would use it for your honor and your glory. Bless his finances, bless his family, Lord. And in nombre de Cristo Jesus, in Jesus' mighty name, Father God, amen. Love you, brother David. Love you too, guys. Thank you. Dave, thanks for calling in, bro. We'll talk to you later, bro. Love you. All right, brother. All right, later. He's a good cat, man. Right, David. Yeah, no. I know, man. He, he's, he's, he's good. So, Jess, we're at, uh, shoot, dude, I don't even, we're, we're, we're about a little over an hour. And we, 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 we haven't crossed even started. A lot. No, we haven't even started. Yeah. So, um, yeah, we're, we're kind of like at halftime. We're not at halftime, but I just want to remind people, man. <clears throat> I told Jesse uh, when I talked to him yesterday, and uh, there's a few people that I call when I when I have issues. Uh, you know, Jesse's always one that I call if I need some uh, a very strong prayer that I'm just nervous about. Um, the uh, my deacon in my church, Deacon Carl, uh, another one, great man. Like I, I mean. Uh, I've sat here in confusion, yeah. and we're going to get into something that uh, it's going to make people uncomfortable, and that, that's cool. I mean, th- that's why I do what I do, you know. Um, I don't know what we're talking we about. No, yeah, exactly, yeah. exactly. Okay, let's go with it. Um, I have, and for me to come out on the show and say, because, you know, it's something very private, but I, I feel that I'm not the only one that battles with it. Okay. And 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 I and I've reached out to, to deacons guided me so much, in, uh, you know, as far as knowledge wise. But I see with with what's coming up next week. Next Tuesday is is going to be the biggest election that Amen. our country has ever seen. Amen. And if you don't believe that. Man, I don't know what I don't know where you're sleeping. Yeah. You, you need to open your eyes. Yeah. Amen. And we are not here to change your mind on any way that you feel. Um, Jesse's a, he, he he's he's strong in, in where he stands. And 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 like I told him uh, yesterday when we were yeah. having a conversation, I said, "Man, you know, sometimes I kind of just kind of sit back and I want to listen to both sides. I, I want to hear, you know. And I think this is the it's not the first time." It's not the first time, but I think me being an older gentleman and, and uh, being able to see how the world is, where I'm at spiritually, where I'm at with 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 being, you know, uh, Catholic, um, 
and, and it's not just it's just not Catholics either. Right. You know, you have where people are voting and I had a conversation today where I just said, you know, I, sometimes I, I see my friends. Who, who, who are my friends? You know what I mean? And I say they're my brothers in Christ or whatever. And they're, they're diehard on what they believe in. Just the same way me and you are diehard for what we believe in. Amen. But the, the argument always comes down to, you know, I never liked mi- mixing religion and government. Right. But, but I think lately... Um, that has been kind of one of the number one things that's that people are, are choosing. Right. You know what I mean? It's 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 a uh, it's pro life. It's it's pro choice. You know what I mean? You 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 have both sides. Um, Joe Biden, he's a Catholic. Amen. He's not allowed to to receive the the Eucharist in some in some churches. A lot of people don't know that because. And, and he does it out of respect for the priest. Amen. Doesn't doesn't want to put the priest in a in a Come situation right. where like, so uh, what I'm trying to say is like you know so, Joe, we'll take it off a of joke. Put it on me. Me being Catholic, it, it's almost it's almost uh, saying that since since I since I I'm Catholic and I and I should believe 100 percent what what the, the Catholicism teaches us that there's no way I could vote blue. There's there's no way that I could I could vote for for Joe Biden because of pro choice, okay. you know, pro life. Um, but I I think that it's put me in. It's almost like it puts you in a corner, dude, and it, and it, and it makes me it, it makes me feel it makes me feel ugly because it, it's it's to where where. I think that if I go to church and somebody says, man, I've seen his post before. This dude, this dude is blue. He's not red. Right. But yet you're going to go up there and, and you know, you're, you're, I'm backing something that they believe is bad. Right. But I'm not for that bad part. Right. You know what I mean? There's, there's other things besides, and, and, and this is the way I'm seeing it. There's other, there's other things besides that. And the ticket. Right. Right. There's, there's other things to look at, and it, it hurts me, man. It, it 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 hurts me on the inside that that that's part of that's part of church now. Right. It is. And, you know, it, it's a sad thing, brother. My permita. I'm gonna speak. You know what? It's my hour. <laughs> that man, that's why I told you. Hey, you know, it you is know, what it hallelujah, is. Hallelujah, Jesus. <clears throat> I'm not here to to badger anyone. You know, uh, in fact, I've been called. Um, it was insinuated that I was a baby killer by a brother that I cried with at an act retreat. Just, oh, wait a minute, man! I mean, but you, we're act brothers here. If that means anything to you, and I say that very strongly because they, the the acts as the uh, I don't like call it movement the acts ministry. Comes from a it was it was birthed in a in a in a Catholic setting, a Catholic mm-hmm. church. And when we were crying together, or when you were ministering, and when you were singing, and those say, hey, "Honey, I'm your brother." And now you would call me a baby killer because I don't see something like you see it. Uh, it was insinuated that I was. And then uh, about a couple of months ago, I was told by another brother, "Yes, out, out of the blue, yes, you are a baby killer." And I said, "Okay." And then I was told by a pastor whom, whom I grew up loving. He was a minister at the time. I was told that I'm going to hell. I, I, I'm going to paraphrase it. I'm going to try to get as close to as, as I possibly can because I don't want to have to open my you know, opening and reading and stuff like that. I'm going to get as close as I can to it. <clears throat> Is if, uh, hey, dude. First of all, my name is dude. That's it. <laughs> I'm just joking. <laughs> I'm so and so in bold letters. No, this is so and so in bold letters. Well, first of all, you're being aggressive right off the bat, bro. I, I, I want you to see that. I, I want you to see what's going on here, and I'm going to give you the description of it. I'm going to describe it to what happened. Hey, 
uh, dude, this is so and so bold letters. Okay, I mean that's getting tando as we know in in, in texting. In texting, yeah. Okay, and as if I didn't know who you are because I know who you are because you're you're texting me your pictures, your pretty pictures up there. Those are This is so and so bold letters. It's a matter with you, man. Paraphrasing it, you know Biden and and Harris. Look what they stand for. They stand for abortion and stand uh, homosexuality. Kamala it says married girls. You know, if you, you vote Biden, Harris, you're going to hell. My response, and I hear several interactions, but my response was always shaking my head. Because I choose, because I'm in control. <laughs> I choose to respond to you if I want, if I don't want, I don't have to, because you don't affirm me. God Almighty, this right here, gente, people of God, this is what affirms you. And when you're, and, and when, when you're in relationship with Jesus Christ, man, he gives you the, see, the Bible says, I am not the, the author of confusion. God's not the author of confusion. Jesus Christ is not the author of confusion. When you pray and, and God, Lord, and, and, and you plead with him and, and, and you're crying and, and doing all this stuff, he brings that peace. He doesn't confuse you. Now, he might give me a piece of a certain thing here, but you might be in turmoil, or you might have a piece of the way you think, and that's cool. Maybe it's for your growth. Maybe it's for my growth. I don't know. So he says, you're going now. The scripture in the Bible says this. Jesus Christ, red letter, open the Bible, people of God. And in, 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 if your Bible's red letters, that means in the New Testament, anytime Jesus Christ spoke, it's in red letters. That's Jesus Christ speaking himself. He says, no one get, comes to the Father but through me, through Jesus Christ. And I say con esto respeto because, I, you know, if you want to call me Catholic, I'm Catholic, brother. I've been baptized. I mean, David Mayorio is my, you know, my confirmation. I mean, if you don't want to call me Catholic, then don't. I'm okay with it. I'm okay with it, seriously. <clears throat> the, the, um, he said, I'm, I'm going to hell now in, in, in red letter. Jesus Christ says, no one gets to the Father but through me. And I say this with respect, and, and I can show you in Scripture, we have more time. I'm not going to get to heaven and listen to my heart, people. <laughs> don't, 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 admit, don't unplug me. <laughs> it doesn't say that I'm going to get to, Jesus, I'm going to, 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 to God through our Virgin Mary. Read the Scripture. They said, no one gets to the Father but through me. In other words, Jesus Christ is emphasizing through Jesus, through me, that's how you get to the Father. Now, when he told me that I'm going to hell if I vote this way, well, he's telling me if I'm going to go to heaven, i got to vote for Trump. No, camarada, because I have a peace. Now, am I for abortion? Absolutely not. Is abortion the sin? Seguro que see according to what scripture says. Absolutely. But do some women have to have an abortion? Yes. And, and, and if you start looking at the ticket and stuff that they're, that they're what's on the ticket and stuff, it's more of Kamala saying, I will always defend the rights of a woman to make her choice of what she wants done with her body. But let me ask you this, and you and I are speaking. How would you feel if your wife had to, and, and anything, I don't know, but anything, she needs something done, and because my vote said, no, she can have it, they say, oh, wait a minute. How would a woman feel, what do, you mean, what do you mean I can't do this? Because your vote said no to me? You know, how, how can that happen? The, the issue with, 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 with homosexuality is the sin absolutely according to what scripture says right here, according to scripture. But let me tell you something, man. If, the, you know, I, I could speak to somebody, if they ask me that question, and I, I've had that question asked me before, Jesse, you know, I, I had this one brother say, Jesse, my, my daughter, you know, as that she's gay and she's going to go to, to hell. And I said, my brother, the only thing I could tell you is what scripture says. But I also could tell you this. The scripture also says about the mercies of God. And, 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 I, and I could tell you the, 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 the mercies of God and the grace of God. Who am I to tell you? Yeah, she's going to go to hell. Yeah, he's going to hell. Who am I, brother? All I can say, mira, this is what the scripture says, but all, it also says that Jesus loves you. Because when Jesus Christ died on the cross, he says, it is finished. What was finished, bro? And, and do I get to heaven through my actions, through my works? Absolutely not. Okay, I've been called these horrible things. I've been told I'm going to hell. I've been told I'm a baby killer. 
because <clears throat> I have my voting blue. All these folks who have said ugly things to me, <laughs> uncomfortable things, I, I shouldn't say, I'm not even going to say ugly, I'm not even going to give you that power. The uncomfortable things because you're the one that's uncomfortable, not I. Hallelujah, Jesus, I like that one. Ese caído del cielo, I like that one. The uncomfortable, uncomfortable things that have been said to me, I have the peace of God when I've come to him and I've said, Lord, you know, God Almighty, why I'm voting blue. You know, Father God, I have a wife that has multiple as the, uh, uh, diseases, Lord. And you know financially, God Almighty, if, if, this, if the, if the, uh, the, uh, the uh, health care, God, if it's taken from us and yes, they're going to do the whole deal. He said, okay, no, he already said he's not going to. Let me tell you something, brother. I don't trust a man that's lied 20,000 times in three and a half years. I'm sorry. I don't care who you are. It is mentiroso and I can't trust you. Bottom line. I can't trust a man that I see with my own eyes watching everything he says is rhetoric that's, that's going to cause riots. That's going to, that's setting you up instead of bringing peace. I don't trust the man that, that's going to go and have a photo op, having the Bible, first of all, upside down. Oops, I'm sorry, i got to flip it up. I don't know what I'm doing. I'm going to have a photo op, and, and during the time of protesting, and, and, and they're, you know, they're, they're shooting at these protesters. And the scripture says this, man. When you come to Christ, the first thing that changes is the inward man and then the outward man. But either way, the also scripture says is that by your fruit, you shall be known. What godly fruit is that? So for me to say, well, I'm a Catholic man and I have to vote this way, that's wrong. Because there was a time, I remember growing up, there was a time that whenever you voted, <clears throat> whenever you voted, you vote behind a curtain. And that was between you and God Almighty. God Almighty has given me the freedom. First of all, I've been set free when he found me. When I said yes, Lord, and he saved me. I'm saved by grace. Hallelujah, Jesus. I'm set free. I'm free. And as an American, I'm free because of men like you. Men like, like your son. I think you have a daughter that, that's a military. Uh, a women like her. I've been, I'm free to vote as I want to vote. He, I mean, he spent some time. And military people have spent time in the military. Make sure that I'm free. Let me do I'm going to take it a step further. I am free to take a knee if I want because of men like him. And for someone that's a leader in the United States of America, for him to use that as a, you know, as a, as a deterrent, as he used it when he went in his first campaign and doing all that stuff when, when Ka uh, the Kaepernick uh, took his knee, for him to put the focus on there. It's so ironic that when the man, when he did that in a national platform trying to bring peace, what brought, what brought riots, and, I, and I'm going to say this against white people. I'm saying about what took place. You saw it in the news. When, when they did, the the, the African-American man that took a knee in a national platform for peace and equality, hey, look what's going on. Look what's going on to us. A white officer put his knee on a black man, causing the beginning of all these riots. Now, I'm not speaking against blue. I'm not speaking against the police officers. My son is a police officer. But I got to speak what's in my heart. Where in scripture does it tell us? Where in scripture does it tell us, man, that it's okay for hate to spread hate? And up and down, whether I'm Catholic, Baptist, born-again Christian, or, you know, Bible-thumping, tongue-speaking, come on, Jesus. Where does it tell me in scripture, man, that, 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 about hate, that I'm supposed to promote hate? It doesn't say it. Well, getting to heaven, will there be more people? Will there be anybody in heaven other than Catholic? Will there be uh, other people other than Baptists or, or, or Methodists? Or would, would, would it be, as, as John 21 speaks, when, when Jesus said, hey, when you cut the fish, bring them to me. The Bible says in, in the scripture, it says it was a multiple, a multiple of fish, meaning all kinds of colors. All kinds of, 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 of uh, as, as the different, different as ethnicities and churches. Of, bring them to me. Only te dice in the palabra de Dios right here, man. Please show me that, that what's going on with the, this leadership, that it's okay. I'm going to say one more thing, and I'm going to stop on that. I hope. <laughs> the 
whole thing with immigration. Read Matthew. Matthew 35. Read it. And when it tells you on there about, the, about the, 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 um, the, uh, the stranger, let me paraphrase it. You know, Jesus says, hey, man, when, when I was sick, you didn't visit me. When I was in jail, you didn't visit me. When I was sick, you didn't come to the hospital. When I was sick, you didn't feed me. When I was a stranger, excuse me, you didn't take me in. The word stranger, when you do a breakdown in the Hebrew, which is the closest language to scripture, when you break down the word stranger, it's immigrant. When I was an immigrant, you didn't take me in. Now, I don't work for ICE. If I worked for ICE, brother, I'd be doing the best job I could, and I'd be just picking up all kinds of people. But I don't work for ICE. So therefore, if I'm a Christian man, which I am, which that, that was challenged too, whether I'm a real Christian or not. Being a Christian man, my responsibility is to spread the gospel right here. My responsibility is to bring anybody in that I possibly can bring them into the Lord. John, 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 and it tells you in John 21. It tells you, bring them in, love them, feed them. Whether they are Hispanic, whether they have papers, whether they don't. And this is where I stand very strongly. Do I vote blue? Absolutely. I'm probably going to get more hate. And, and you know what, brother? I'm, I'm, I'm okay with it because I don't give you that power. You're the one that's uncomfortable with it. I'm not going to go anywhere. This is the most important election that there is, the most, because when you're talking about health care, bro, women like, like, like my, my wife, my mother-in-law, my granddaughter who has us there, she's in remission, thank you, Jesus, with leukemia. What's my son going to do, man? And this thing is taken, and all of a sudden, like, oh, man, because, you know, it, it's expensive, bro. It, it's very expensive. You know, we're with emos with the way it is. No, I, I'm, I'm, I'm with you. I, I you know... Uh, I, I'm probably, you know, you're saying you're gonna get a lot of hate. You know, I'll probably get some messages. You know, like, bump, dude, what the heck's going on? That's that's not that's not your your style. What is my style? What, 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 I mean, what is right? What is wrong? You know, I had a guest last week, uh, oh, uh, Mr. McCain, Jimmy McCain, uh, the late Senator John McCain's son, and he said something. It's gonna. It's gonna. Not, it doesn't contradict what you say, but you know, uh, I like to. I like to stay level, uh, even and give people the bit. Like, right. let me hear what they got to say. And he said something that even my mom. My mom texted me. She's like, Neil, when he said that, it really stuck with me. Mm -hmm. And it was something simple that he said. You, you, if you didn't catch it, he said that America is still gonna be America. Come November 4th. Right. Come November 5th. Right. You're still going to have to get up. You're still going to have to go to work. Right. You're still going to have to take care of your family. Right? If we would just focus more on that, and, and you know what I mean? I think it would just be, I mean, you didn't see, and I'm with you 100%. I'm with you with, with what you said. But what I try to get people to see is that the elections before, uh, say from 2008 back, mm -hmm. there wasn't this. No, there, you know. And I, I told if you didn't watch last week, I brought up a, a to to Jimmy. I said, you know, I watched a speech that a Catholic diocese of New York, I believe, does. They do every year, and they it had Barack Obama and McCain sitting right next to one another. And they both had to give a speech. And they both hit each other in the ribs, jokingly, right. but 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 still real. Right. You know what I mean? But res uh, uh, not jokingly, respectfully. Right. And they both said good things about one another. And I, and I had this conversation. With my wife said, "Do you think that could that would happen now? Do you, do you think?" And and, and it's not. It, it, you know. And and I'm okay. I'm okay with listening to people that are that are that are pro Trump, and 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 I'll and I'll take it in that you know I, I've said this before and I'll say it a million times. He'll do five good things, but the minute he tweets or he opens his mouth, it up. Th those five things that he said or that he's done, it gets it gets just ignored. Right. Not that it's not good. Not that it's not moving the country forward. Yes, it is, but. But why cause a divide? And then you get the people who say, well, 
Obama started the, the division of this country. And, and, and I don't, I don't yeah. believe that. Right. You know, I, I really don't. Me, personally, you can have your own belief. That's, that's, that's fine. If you don't like what I'm saying, you can, you know, it, it, take the thumb and you scroll up. It, it's cool. I'm okay with it. But um, I like to just talk about things that that's, th- this is my show. I, I like to talk about how I feel. You know what I mean? If my guest, if, if you were on the other side of the thing, I would let you talk and I would, you know, say what you got to say. And that's what you believe. But you said something earlier, Jesse. That's what make, you know, people have died for this country for, for a long time. I got somebody calling in. Let's see. Let me see if this is, maybe it's a bill collector. We'll find out. Hello? For, for a long time, hey, somebody calling I'm calling in. for, uh, I'm calling for bumper. bumper. Yeah. Who am I speaking to? Yeah. Yeah. This is a bill collector. I just, uh, your lights are going to go out pretty soon. If you don't Hey man, it's it's uh, your brother Cruz, man. What's up, Cruz? <laughs> yeah, yeah, it's your brother Cruz. Hey, um, I, I I just I just want I just want to say a couple of things. First of all, man, if I can, if you got a couple of minutes, lower your TV, Cruz. yeah, near, or lower whatever you listen to the Facebook on, lower it so it doesn't echo. Here, let me uh, lower your TV, yeah, near, or lower whatever you listen Here, to. Let me just let me lower it. So it got it. Is that better? That's better. Yeah. Hey. So, um, no. I just wanted to uh, first of all just say, hey, uh, I love I, lo- I love the both of you guys and and Jesse. I I I did get that letter today with uh, twenty five dollars to say something good about you. So, uh, I wanted to call in. And, Thank you very uh, much. I'll keep you for another year. <laughs> hey. So, by the way, I mentioned at the the beginning of the uh, uh, of uh, of the podcast that you know I I. When I first met you, I, I I told you that I didn't I disliked you I I I didn't I don't know if I said I hated you yeah you did, I did. Yeah. yeah yeah I did I did okay so anyway but you know but I you know I started thinking back about that and this was you know over ten years ago and 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 you know this is a this was a back then this was an addict this was a dealer this was a a gentleman that wore a mask back in those days and so when when I was confronted by you and I heard your message. I was like, hey, man, this guy, you know, he thinks he's got it all together. You know, he knows he knows everything. You know, he's a he's a saved he's a saved man. So, you know, I was a little envious. You know, I you know, I was one of those that uh, had committed so many sins that, you know, I, I, I never thought I could I can have any type of salvation or forgiveness from our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. But you, Jesse, you have a big, big part of my life. You are my mentor. And you're one of you're one of, in life. You have to have one or two people that you can call, and that you can trust, and you can tell them just about anything that you want. And you can you can trust them, and they and, and and they will keep that, they will keep that in their hearts, and 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 it'll be just between the both of you. And you know, Jesse, you know, you and I have had so many conversations about Amen. you know certain situations. And we've been some, through some tough times and good times with our ministry, and. Thank God, you know, he's, he's, he's done a lot for us, but, you know, I just wanted to call and just say, Hey, you know, you're a humble man and, um, and, and you're real, you're a real person, you know, you're, 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 you're one of everybody, you know, if you walk down the street and you see somebody, you know, that's Jesse. The, the, the only thing that, um, that you have Jesse is that, um, you know, you've, 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 uh, become a, a wonderful vessel to, to God. And it's helped out a lot of people. And I just wanted to say it's helped out. Amen. It's helped me out a whole lot. And totally. like I said, I just wanted to say hello. And, and, and Bumper Man, I love you. I love, you. I love your family. I'm, I'm always praying for you guys and praying for everybody out there. But I just wanted to mention something. If I could just read a scripture real quick, because I know you're about over with the podcast. But um, it's Ezekiel 36, 26. And I will give you a new heart and put a new spirit in you. I will remove your, remove you from your heart of stone and give you a heart of flesh. And 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 I wanted to finish with it's really about the relationship, your own relationship that you have with God. Yes. It, it, it's your own relationship. It's not about what walls you walk into, or a door, or a church, or or a meeting, or a group meeting, or Bible study. It's your own relationship with God. And um, I just wanted to let let you know that. You know, I'm here, 
you know, in my journey, still trying to learn as much as I can. And uh, I just wanted to say that God loves us all un- un- unconditionally. And, and thank you for your time, man. And, and I'm glad, glad to see you guys on here. Appreciate you. Uh, thanks for calling, Cruz. We really appreciate it, man. We love you, brother. Love you, Cruz. Too, all right. You, you know, when he said the relationship with God, it was something that I, that I didn't mention just a bit ago. If a woman has, for whatever reason, has an abortion, I have to ask this. Is that a forgivable sin? And before you answer it, before you, you text, know what you're texting. Read the scripture. Is it a forgivable sin? Well, that's murder, okay. Is it a forgivable sin? Is it? And if Jesus Christ... The minute this woman has an abortion, she cries because she'll feel that conviction. And she asks the Lord, forgive me, I'm sorry. If the Lord has forgiven her, who are we to judge that woman? Who are we? I'm not promoting or condoning abortion, no, because I, I've said it just a bit ago, just a few minutes ago. It, it's a sin. No. But I also know that you know if a woman does that, if a person maybe gay who am I to shun that person away when me as a Christian man is to love everyone my question is this if that gay person or that person who who, who did the uh, uh, committed it, uh, an abortion if you're in church worshiping God come on God and that person sits next to you <laughs> Do you accept that person being next to you? If that person that is gay or that person that, 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 is, that, that, that has, has had an abortion and they ask you for help after coming out of church, do you? Or do you just say chale? Because that's not the way I voted. See, I'm getting real here. I'm getting real with it. I'm not talking about policy because I'm not a man who speaks about policy because I don't understand it. What I do understand is how to treat people. Do we do that? Do, 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 have we gotten away? Have we gotten away from the way we're supposed to treat our brother, our neighbor? It, it tells us in scripture, or what, what one of the commandments tells us. Have we gotten away from that? Who are we? I mean, not necessarily if God Almighty appointed you and anointed you, and I don't say that sarcastically, I mean that in, in truth. But you've been appointed and anointed, appointed and anointed by the Spirit of God to judge someone because of what they've done, because of their sin. Now let's talk about the other sins. Isn't, aren't we killing families when we separate them? Are we doing that? 545 children. 542. 542 children without parents. You know, and I'm just going by what the news is telling me. Fox is saying <laughs> that we want to get technical with it. 542 now children. And for the first two days, like, we can't get a hold of them. We can't get a hold of them. Third day was, hey, the reason why we're not there is because they don't want them anymore. I said, well, which one is it? I'm not understanding. Now, either way, whichever one, had we not done that? Yes. President Trump asked a, a big question to Joe Biden. Who built them? Who built those cages? Well, it was built for a certain reason. And, and the reason why they were there was for special cases. Well, like, let's say, for example, you're illegal, you bring your family, stuff like that, and you're the father, and you start selling drugs here, you start breaking laws, stuff like that, while you're, you're just, uh, uh, waiting to get your, mm. your, become a citizen. Right. They got to separate you from the family because you're dangerous to the family. As any American family, the father's selling drugs is dangerous to his own family. But yeah, they were built. But here's my question. Who filled them? So we, we can't put this on, tri- we can't put this on, on Obama and, and, and in the past. Well, we have to concentrate on is the current within these four years. Why didn't we make these changes about abortion and stuff? I mean, like the whole deal within these four years. That's what I'm trying to say, man. I mean, it, it, we have to get back down to this right here. What is the word of God telling us before government is telling us? So, so what do you say to people just that, and, and like I always say, being devil's, devil's advocate, you know, Trump, on the other hand, he he's he's wanted churches to open back up. 
Right. While the blue side's like, hey, no, because of the the COVID, and you know, he he, you know that that's that's a positive thing. You know, he he wants he wants us to to be able to you know, have the freedom to to express our, our religions and talk to God where we want to talk to God at. Um, there's just a whole bunch of things, you know, that you you we're strong. Everybody's uh, on one side or the other, right? right. You know, and and I honestly believe, man. I think that, you know, I said it last week with, with Mr. McCain on, you know, we need to, we need to find that, that those people on the seesaw, bro, because I, I believe that our country right now is, is a seesaw. You know, it, we, we, we both want to, you know, the left being Democrat, the right being Republican, they want to hold the seesaw down. They want their feet touching the ground, right? right? They want to keep them other ones up in the air. Where are the people? Where is the people? Where is where is the where is the the people that need to to work together, right? To work to the middle of that seesaw, so that seesaw is level, and both people's feet are planted on the ground, not one or the other dangling right. in the air. That's the way I can put it. You right. know, when right. I talk to my kids, I, I, I kind of put it that way. Um, that's what I want, man. I, I, I the, 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 the. The you telling me, not you, but people sure. telling me you shouldn't do this because of this, this, right. this, and that. Hey, man, how about telling me let's let's sit down together right. and fix it? I had a conversation today where where uh, I can't remember the other gentleman's name, but it was Ronald Reagan, who was a, who was a Republican, right, right. and 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 the 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 I think he was the leader of the Democratic Party, I believe. I, I can't remember the guy's name. I, I was way way I was a young kid, but. Uh, speaking to this gentleman, you know, he told me he's like, you know, and and it, it it made me feel good. Like, there was no my party, your party. If there was an issue, they would go to lunch. They would sit down, even though they're on the opposite ends of the seesaw, but they would leave that lunch with a common goal. Amen. Yes. And and to me, we've lost that. I mean, our uh, the 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 far left people, their way of thinking is. Is sometimes just outrageous. Right. The far right people, they come across to me sometimes as racist. Right. But is there people on the far left that are racist? Hell yeah. Oh, absolutely. Yeah. You know, and and, and, and what I uh, think with the word race and being racist, people always assume that you're ra- that only white people are racist. That's not true. That's not true. That's not true. Yeah. You 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 got to be an idiot to think that. Right. But you know, with having you here. And, and you being a, 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 a dedicated man to, to, to the Lord, what do you think about that? Do you agree that we need people to meet in the middle and, 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 to, and to keep both, both parties, you know, feet on the ground? I mean, you, you, you scratch your head and say, man, the great country that we are. All right, we're being laughed at, bro. The, okay, that's fine. We're being laughed at. But we're, we're, the great country that we are, these are the two people that we have. That's gonna lead our country, right? You know what I'm saying, and 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 you 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 choose one or the other. I mean, or or you just don't vote, right? Right? You 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 just don't vote. Like if that makes you feel better, you, you don't vote. But the fact of the matter is that next week is gonna be a huge change for America. Either way, right. Either way, don't 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 take the word change, meaning that I'm saying one's gonna it I want to see what we do as a country after the election. Things are gonna get better no matter which way you see it. Things are gonna get better, they're gonna become worse. It is that simple. And and the first the first question that you that you asked about the churches, whether they should be opened or should be closed. I believe this. When the when initially when initially said, "Hey man, this thing hit. We didn't know how to handle it, and which is a total different different story. Why we weren't prepared, right? We, we were, but oh well. That would take us into another hour. I got you. As the the um, initially when when you know they said we need to close this down, this down. There were some churches who said no. Our faith says no, and all, and I can respect that. But then I'm also I got a frown on that." Because as a pastor, as a minister, 
we, or, or, as, uh, as a godly man, godly woman, you know, we, we say, hey, we're strong in our faith, and, and we promote our faith as well. We, 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 we speak about our faith and all. But with great faith comes great wisdom. Because when God blew his breath in you, and he formed you and all, then he went, he completed you, he purposed you, knowing that you would be a pastor, a minister, or even if you're not, a man of God, woman of God, a father, a parent, a leader, a marine, whatever it is, the leader. When God blew his breath in you, he knew that your purpose, he knew that, okay, you're going to have, you're going to have these uh, uh, choices you need to make with wisdom. As far as the church, there were some churches that said, we're not closing. We're not closing. And their congregation got infected with this nasty virus. Some pastors got sick with this virus. I believe because they didn't use wisdom. Now, if you stop and really think about it, say we need to close, why are we closing? You know, I'm gonna say like it is, bro, because even right now, the, 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 the commercials are seen saying that, you know, Biden wants to take your guns and your, and your church away, your religion away. Eso es puro pelo. It's, it's being right now, right now. Currently. That, that's bullshit for my American it, it, views. It's, 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 it's not, yeah, it's bullshit. Oh, hallelujah. They, um, 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 that's a lie, okay? They said, let's close the churches for now. Let's get this under control, which I totally agree. Because let me tell you, man, your life is worth much more to me, man, than a movie theater. Your life, man, is worth, is worth much more to me, bro, than the gym. Your life is worth much more to me than the place where you get your haircuts and your nails done. Because those aren't necessities, bro. Those are things that, hey, man, they're not necessities. Food's a necessity and stuff. I mean, is, okay, so the church, where, do we, where does church start, bro? It doesn't start when you go to St. Paul, when you go to Holy Rosary, when you go to Life Restored Church, at tu canton, at your home, because you read the scripture, gente. The scripture says, the man, el señor, the man of the house is the priest of the home. The priest of the home. Yes, when we go to church, we have our, our pastors, you know, who is our, our pastor corporately. But at the home, it starts with the man or even the, the woman who, who, who is not married and she's raising children. She's the priest of that home. It starts at home. Your worship, you don't have to wait to go to church for worship. You worship at home. How are they doing it with Zoom? Awesome churches say, let's get Zoom and let's do it. They became creative with the cars coming in and, and the parking lot filling and, and the preacher preaching up a storm and people honking, hallelujah, Jesus. The, we know church as a building and, and, and we're not having church because we're not in a building. Charlie, brother, that's your mentality. I'm going to tell you something, man. Stop putting God inside this little box right here, right there. And I'm going to say this with mucho respeto, man. If I'm Catholic, I don't believe nothing outside of Catholic. Well, then you know what? You're putting God in this box. If I'm that Baptist, I don't believe nothing else on that. You're putting God in this box right here. Because aside, you know, anything that grows out of this box, God can grow. But if you see God for what he is right here, you allow God to grow as big as you want, as much as you have. Now, as far as the balance, it starts with your leadership, bro. What, you, what you're going to promote coming out of your mouth, man. Whether you're going to promote unity or whether you're going to promote as the, uh, uh, division. Whether you're going to promote love and peace and tranquility or whether you're going to promote aggression. Here's a good example, bro. And not as if I missed it, which I know I didn't. I haven't seen Trump one time. And I really thought he was going to do this when he took the photo walk. That what a golden opportunity for him to speak about unity. I haven't seen him or heard him speak about unity, about being united, America. Heck no, bro. It's the other way around. Now, do we need that coming? I mean, do we need that center space to where, like, absolutely, pero empieza from the top, man. From the top, because, mira, if I, if I, favor you over uh, David Luis. I'm gonna, everything that you say, it's gonna be, that's right, that's right, that's right, because I'm favoring you. And because I'm favoring you because I am gonna follow as you lead me. So if, if you're gonna lead a country, there's gonna, you're gonna have those who follow you. But if you're gonna lead without, without promoting 
as the unity and peace and stuff, how can we have that common? How can people become afraid of you? And that's his, 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 his biggest thing, bro, that I need to instill as the fear in you, the whole suppression. If you're going to go vote, people are afraid to go vote. I mean, come on, man. So I, I think it starts with the leader, and you got to promote, and, and, and that's how you start getting that, that center and that seesaw. That's that's my, my no. That, I mean that that's 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 a uh, that's um you know that's true. We uh, I got some comments. And maybe you can respond to these. This is uh, the Eucharist is what is celebrated at Mass. Amen. This is why church is important to Catholics. Amen. Um, you, do you agree with but, that? But absolutely. But we also have Eucharistic ministers who go to your home. Amen. Church. Yeah, True. I, no, no, no. I, 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 I mean, I agree with I agree with the comment, but right. then I also agree with what you're saying. Right. Um, but then again, you gotta you gotta take a step back and be like, we're in a pandemic. Like, right. it, this is not normal times. Correct. You know what I mean? So but that should that shouldn't make that shouldn't stop you because you can't take your family, put them in a car, go drive and sit in a pew. That doesn't mean that you can't celebrate right. the Lord. So I have to ask this question. Respond to that. That's an awesome question. Does that mean that if I don't take the Eucharist, because not because I don't want to, but because I can't, does that mean that I'm not saved? Does that mean that I'm not going to heaven? Does that mean that I'm in sin? Does that mean that God's going to strike me down? Well, I don't think that it means that, but it, it, it does create that intimacy with the Lord. Right, your intimacy is your relationship with Jesus Christ. Amen? I, no, agreed, yeah. but, but to me, you know... Uh, if you believe in the Eucharist, like you, 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 right. you, you are taking the Lord physically right. into your body. Absolutely, but when I can't, <coughs> when I cannot, not because it's my choice of not to, but when I cannot, because I have a strong relationship with Jesus Christ, me that brother, the Holy Spirit. This guy's gonna call in. What are they? We'll wait. <laughs> Who's that? We're about to find out. It's uh, I think this is from New York City. So, let's see. You gonna call in, Rod? Let's see if he calls in. But uh, you know, just I, I, I'm real. I'm real passionate about you know uh, certain things. But then again, I'm, there it is. I'm reasonable. Sure. You know, you just get it. Absolutely. Hey, Rod, what's going on, man? Hey, what's going on? Hey, yeah. Uh... Sir, how how are we doing, sir? My name is Hector. I just wanted to put it out there for you. I was the one that uh, posted that comment about the Eucharist. How are we doing? I, I'm I'm doing good. I'm a blessed man, and I pray blessings in, in you and your life, brother. So let me let me right. let me introduce you real quick, Rod. That's yeah. rude of me. So so Rod, look look what I have his phone as still. See that SGT? Oh, yes. it hasn't changed. He he used to be one of my sergeants under, th- under th- work Thank for you me. for serving, and I mean that with with the bottom of my heart. I tried joining the Marine Corps. Following the, the, the footsteps of my of my two older brothers, they're, they're old school Marines. Uh-huh. And um, when I went to go take my physical, they picked me up in the green van, and they took me to on Commerce Street. I don't know if they're still there or not. That that office, and there was a lot of people there, man. And when I took my physical, you know, they asked me to drop to your knees. I don't know if they still do that or not, but back then, I've always had problems with my knees, as, as you know, you know, being in um, the the and, Charlie. And, and, and yeah, and they, they told me no, and and I I I, I, I beg, come on, bro, I'm going to be okay, man. I want to tell no, brother, man. Sorry, man. not gonna happen. So, so I, 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 I thank you for your service, and 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 I honor you because that's oh. the, uh, you played a big part of of uh, you played your part, and in, in uh, allowing us to be free as Americans. You know, and uh, I just want to say thank you for your support. And to be honest with you, I, uh, you know, I had a lot of uh, talking to. I had a bump actually had a bring me to the side and talk to me a little bit because my old ways were kind of too old for the new core. You know, so. Yeah, he, he kind of had to pull me to the side a couple of times. But, no, I get it. I get it. So, yeah, so, uh, you know, uh, appreciate it. And uh, God be with you as well. You know, I, pre- I'm, I always feel like I'm in the presence of greatness when I share the faith with, uh, you know, a fellow brother in Christ. Um, but um, but here, here's the deal, right, when it comes to the Catholics and the Eucharist, right? Well, we, you know, for, for, for Catholics, the Eucharist is not a symbol. It's not. It's exactly the flesh and blood in Christ. Yes. You know, we, we, we believe that. The Eucharist Amen. and the... Uh, the, the body and blood, right? Now, I get it. You're saying that, you know, they do have Eucharistic ministers that I can actually come to your house and stuff like that. But that is especially reserved for those 
who cannot make it to mass. Right. Now, granted, we're in, we're, we're in a pandemic, and I understand that there's ways around doing things. And like you're saying, you know, and, and like you're saying, you know, uh, uh, the, the, I do believe that the man should be the, uh, the, uh, the guide, the guide of the house, the priest in the house, you know, the, right. pre, the pre, priest, priest to me is like a, is like outstanding rank. I would never, I would never claim it, but yeah, I do believe that the man is the one that guides the family in the house to work, to, to, to walk in the word of the Lord. I believe Amen. that. Amen. Right. Amen. So, but on the other hand, and th this is where it gets a little bit hectic for me. Okay. I couldn't agree with you more where, you know, your hair being done is now more important to your life. Right. Amen. Yes. I couldn't agree with you more. Grab it, grabbing a slice of pizza, sitting down and having a good time with your friend. Hey, you know what? Bake a pizza at home, zoom it, Amen. and you guys enjoy, a, you know, a friendly dinner together virtually. I get it. Okay. But this is the thing that really, really, really gets to me is the fact that, you know, no matter what side you believe in or no matter where you're coming from, first of all, you know, whether you're Democrat, Republican, or in the middle, nobody's preaching unity, period. No. You're exactly, you're right. Well, yeah. okay, go ahead, go ahead. No, no one's preaching unity. If anything, I, I believe that people on both sides are trying to only preach unity as a divide. In other words, you know what? Vote, vote with me because I'm Republican. You know, vote over there because you're a Democrat. Right. Do not talk to a Republican because they might change your mind. Do not talk to a Democrat, they might change your mind. So both of them are kind of grouping up each other on the side, but no one's preaching unity, period, right? right? No one's willing to have the hard discussions, right? And um, so that's, that's the first, that was one of the comments. But going back to the Eucharist, what I don't understand is why, and uh, you know, I don't wanna to take too much away from this, but you know, right now in the Catholic church, there's a lot of controversy that's happening, right? And uh, a lot of people believe, and you know, I put it out there, so do I, so do I, that the, that the Catholic face itself is uh, under scrutiny. And yes. you know, there's a lot of people out there who want to demolish the Catholic faith because of how powerful it is. Amen. And, uh, you know, you know and, and this is where it gets a little bit hectic. And, and, you know, there's people out there who are in high positions to take certain rights away from us so we can't worship the way that we used to. Again, I understand the pandemic. I understand we all need to be safe and sound. But when it's prolonged, when it's prolonged, and you can see how purposefully this is prolonged, when it's to the point where people are out there doing business, but churches are still closed, when you see people who are out there gathering, whether it is in peaceful protest or rioting, you know what, I, I'll, even, I'll even take the rioting out. Pe the people protest. gathering, Come on. even people who are gathering in pre peaceful protest, yes. even on both sides, why is that okay? Right. You know, that's, that's the thing that really gets me. Like that's, that shouldn't, that it, it, it shouldn't be where, you know, oh, let them, exp let them express their, their human right as an American to protest, but not to practice your religion. You know, that, that's what, I, that's what I'm getting at, you know, because for us, the church is where, you know, the church is where it's, uh, where we celebrate the Eucharist and mass. We don't go for the homily. You know, we don't really, I mean, people go for the homily. Yeah, that's cool. You know, the you can read God. the gospel. Yeah, it's the word, the gospel is the word of God. You right. know, so let's we, any anybody can read it, interpret it. But we go to the priests and the pastors to make sure that they 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 are the ones trained through uh, through a, a apostolic a, a post, apostolic succession to understand how to translate that to the layman, right? You're talking you're so, talking about within the Catholic faith, right, Rob? Well, yeah, this is all Catholic faith. Okay, yeah. right. I'm, I'm only speaking the Catholic faith. Okay, right. So through a uh, through a part of uh, uh, um, apostle of succession, you know, these priests are trained. So they're the ones that actually take the word and explain it the best way that they can, that they know how to the layman. That's just like everybody that's not, you know, clergy, you know, so that can be done virtually, but the host, the Holy Eucharist, that's the most important thing that we have for Catholics. And it's unfortunate that, you know, without any other means, the most important part of our faith is taken away from us when you close the church. Amen. And I understand that it's the COVID thing. You know, I keep on repeating that. Right. But why prolong? Right. And, and, and you know, and I think the best way that I could answer that, brother, is, um, again, it's going to start from the very top, our leadership. 
Okay, but let's go to the leadership of the church itself, and I'm speaking in general, which is which is Catholic, Baptist, whatever. Just well, get, the, the, the church I, itself, the pastor at the church. He first of all, he needs to go by the guidelines given to him by the state. Okay, and and then then he could become creative with that. As far as now, if I was a priest, and I don't know, I don't know whether they can do this or not. I don't know. Okay, so I'm just beginning if Jesse Barra was a priest. And, no, and, I and, and, and if I was a priest, I would say, you know what? We have uh, uh, a Eucharistic minister, so let's train others, and let's start taking the host, which is very important to our faith. Let's take them to those, to the homes that need it, aside from those that are ill. Because right now, the pandemic says, I cannot go. Why? Because is it fear? Perhaps. Perhaps it's that fear, regardless of where it comes from and who's the one giving it, whatever. I'm in a situation I can't get to the church because to take the host, which is a, a huge part of, of my faith. So therefore, the, I believe the pastor of the church has to become creative to take the host to, to, the, uh, to the home. Now, I don't, again, I don't know whether they're, they're allowed to do that or not. Uh, you're right, it is prolonged, but we're, how, uh, who is prolonging it? That's that's my that, that's a whole deal as far as saying okay look, if I can't get to church, I got to get to the Word of God, and the okay. Holy Spirit and the Holy Spirit is gonna is gonna give me that revelation of whatever it is that He needs to tell me in reading and studying the Word of God. If we don't yeah. study the Word of God, brother, it's kind of hard to understand it. But if we're constantly in prayer, constantly in worship, constantly constantly in and and I'm not talking about religion, I'm talking about relationship with Jesus Christ, the Holy Spirit, then your, 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 your spirit is always filled. And the first chance as Catholic men and women, first chance that we get to, to go and, and, and take the host, because that's our faith, then we do so. But God's not going to allow us to go empty because we can't take the, uh, the host because of the pandemic, not because you know, we choose not to, but I'm talking about because of the pandemic. Yeah. And I get that, man. You know, and, and I appreciate the perspective. You know, And, and again, like, and that's the be- that's the beauty of uh, of being in such a you know a, a, such a God blessed country as we have now is because of the fact that you know we can talk about these things Amen. and not each other's throats you know. Amen. But you know before I let go, hey, I appreciate your time, bump, and you know I appreciate I appreciate you as well, Jesse. But if I may, just leave this for you for for yes. everyone that's scared, that's uh, for everyone who's afraid of this pandemic and alert, and everyone that's being uh, anxious about it. I just want to leave something out there for you. And this is what, you know, throughout any ty- types of trials and tribulations, this is the one of the verses I love. And I about God. It's a, it's a, it's a, what's, it's Peter. It's one Peter five, seven. Okay. Just put, just uh, letting you know that. So if you want to get a chance, go ahead and read it out. And uh, to me, that's, that's, that's my jam, man. So whenever I feel afraid or anxious or whatever, I say that little phrase right in my head and, you know, off I go. So, let, me, uh, let me bounce one back, right back at you, Rod. Okay. Second uh, Timothy 1 7. God did not give me the spirit of fear, but of power, love, and a sound mind. The word sound mind means self discipline. Mm-hmm. Just get that and, and embrace that into your spirit. And I, I like your spirit, man. You have, you have a good spirit. Thank you for me. He's, 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 he's a powerful man in his own way. Amen. Praise God. He, he, he's, he's a great leader. Rod. Thank, Thank you, you for 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 calling in, bro, and uh, we'll talk. Um, no, absolutely, man, absolutely, and uh, thank you for accepting my call. And I appreciate this discussion. I appreciate you know wh- whether it's a discussion, debate, or however you want to you, you want to define it. But you know, again, it's always I always feel like I'm in the presence of greatness when I'm uh, around my Marines. Around first of all, first and foremost, but, uh, almost. <laughs> first and foremost, but. At, but but uh, to be honest with you, the uh, the only thing that uh, I can say is a little bit greater than that, just a little bit, minute, not too much, but um, actually by a lot, you know, in all honesty, is when I'm around, uh, you know, brothers who share the same faith, faith in Christ. Amen. Well, Amen. God bless you both, man, and uh, not not to take this to too much of a religious aspect, but you know. Now, thanks for to... thanks for calling in, Rod. You you yeah. always you always come you always come loaded, bro. You always come That's loaded. Right. Okay, uh, and all right, bro. Thanks for calling. God bless you. God God bless you sir. Just we we come. I mean, me and you could probably go another two hours easily. <laughs> but 
um, I want to ask you something, and I and I want you to be as as truthful. Okay. Uh, not not truthful because it's it's not going to be very personal. I'll be straight up. I I ask I ask a lot of my guests if there was something that, um, and it's just a question that I like because I like to hear people's answers. It could be long. It could be short. If you were to to talk to a group of kids, young adults, from the ages of 15 to 25, 27 years old, in the world that we live in now, everything that's going on, what would be your message to them? Your direct message to them that if they if they listen to you for one hour talk, if there was you would say there's just if you don't take anything from me but this, what would it be? You know that that, that, that there's so much to say, and uh, so many so many topics and so many angles and stuff. You know to uh, to speak to young people. Young people, I'm talking to you right now. If you're if you're watching, if you're not watching, I'm sure you could always watch us at, at, at a later time. Take this, what's going on, very serious. Set religion. Hear what I'm saying. Please hear what I'm saying. I'm not here to convert anyone. Or, that's not my gig, man. But take religion. Set it to the side for a little bit. And pick up relationship with Jesus Christ. Take what your friends are doing and, and their thoughts and stuff. Put it aside for a while. And listen to the Spirit of God, what he's telling you. Right now, we're living in a time, you know, it, it, it's scary times, but not a time to live under fear. Because as I told you just a bit ago, you know, 2 Timothy 1, 7 says, God did not give me the spirit of fear, but of power, love, and a sound mind. You are in an in a, in a age right now, you know, 15 through, through 24, 27, or whatever it may be. That's a very young age. And you're being attacked every which way. By the devil. You're being attacked every which way, um, uh, spiritual attacks, whether you believe that or not. But according to scripture, that's what's happening right now. I would honor your mom. I would honor your dad or those that are, that are raising you. I would honor them. And I would really, really pay attention to them and spend time with them. Because we could get this pandemic and we could, we could say this is a cause of separation or this is a cause of unity. What unity is that? My family. I get to spend more time with my family. I get to know things that, about my dad that I didn't know because now I have time to speak to him because I can't go out to the movies. I can't do the things that I usually do when there isn't a pandemic. I would get uh, set myself strong in the word of God. I would get your faith. Can, can I go just a little bit? Yeah, yeah. Look, let me, let, let, in scripture, and, and, and I'm sure you know the scripture, you've heard it. But I'm going to present it to you in a, in a di little different manner. We know that the scripture where, where the, the disciples were on the boat and, 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 and the, the waters are crashing, the waves are huge and stuff, you know, they're, they're, about, they're all freaked out, man, they're going to drown. And they see Jesus Christ walking. And Peter says, Lord, if that's you, call me to you. And the, the Bible says that Jesus had come and he went. Now, I've heard this message preached and taught with, with this right here, well, you know, so as long as he had his, his eye on the Lord, he was walking, but the minute the, 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 the wave came, he took his eyes off it and he started to sink. Yes, it's true. But let's look at it in a different perspective. When he said, Lord, if that's you, it's not that he didn't have faith. He had the faith. But I believe that he said, Lord, if that's you, in other words, he was challenging Jesus Christ. Come on, God. He was challenging Jesus Christ. Lord, if that's you, call me to you. And see, so you can say the very same thing to Jesus Christ, the, the one that you have relationship. God Almighty, where are you? God Almighty, you see what's going on right now, God Almighty. You know, I, I'm, right now I'm terrified of this pandemic. You know right now, God Almighty, you know our finances are down because dad doesn't have a job right now. Mom doesn't have a job because of the pandemic, God. Lean on your faith. When he said, Lord, if that's you, Jesus Christ said one word. And all he said was this. Come. See, the Bible says, it teaches us that he walked on water and he did the physical. But in the spirit, he walked on the word, come. He walked when Jesus said, come. And he, he walked on his word. 
Now, when he turned and he saw the wave, as he started to sink, he wasn't drowned. He was in it, although the Bible says, as he started to sink, he hollered, he said, Jesus, save me, and the Lord picked him up. Now, brother, let me tell you, sister, let me tell you this, young people, let me tell you this. If you start feeling that you're sinking, all you have to say is, Lord, Jesus, save me. Because the Bible here, the word of God, the 100 times out of 100 is the truth. It doesn't veer. And the word of God isn't to be interpreted because you can't interpret the truth. The truth is the truth. You give opinions about it, but it can't be interpreted because the truth is the truth. And he said, Jesus, save me. And the Lord picked them up. And he started to pick them up. He told them just like this, man of little faith. Okay. Now, he wasn't putting him down and he wasn't getting after him. In the other scripture, the Bible tells us this. In the, in the other scripture, the Bible tells us this. If you could say, if you have faith as little as a mustard seed, all you have to do, you could, you could tell this mountain move and it's going to move. Your faith, all it has to be as little as a mustard seed. Now, a mustard seed grows to be a huge, huge tree. Strong. That's a mustard seed. A tiny little seed. So he said, if, you, if your faith is this small, let me tell you something about being, your faith being this small, man. When Jesus Christ said it is this small, he knew already that that seed will grow. So all you need is just a little faith that you're going to grow. And the Lord was complimenting him because it took guts for him to say, Lord, if that's you, let me step out to you. Let me walk to you. I pray, and I'm going to pray for this generation right now if I can. I'm going to pray for this generous young people. Jesus Christ, Lord God, I'm going to feel you, Holy Spirit. I feel you right now. I'm going to pray for you mothers. For you mothers right now who are single, a single parent. I'm going to speak to you single parent fathers. Because there's some of y'all out there raising your children. I'm going to speak to you uh, 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 mothers and fathers who, who have your spouse incarcerated. Or perhaps you have your parent incarcerated. Or your son or your daughter incarcerated. I pray that God Almighty will hear your prayer and he'll hear your cry. That when you say, Jesus, save me, that he calls you to him. I pray that when you say, God Almighty, that's you, God. Where are you, God? Where are you, God? That you would, you would just extend your hand and wait for God to grab it because you're not alone. You're not by yourself. According to what scripture says, you're not by yourself. It's a tough time that we're in right now. It's a scary time, but not a time to live in fear because God didn't create you to be in fear. God created you, woman of God, man of God, to be successful. And I pray success all over you. And I pray that God Almighty, that the favor of God would follow you all the days of your life. I pray that God Almighty will touch you in a manner that you've never been touched before. And I pray that when you sleep tonight, that you sleep with such tranquility, that when you wake up, you feel refreshed, and that God Almighty will fill your horn all over again, and that he would pour that oil all over you, that you would wake up feeling refreshed, and then knowing that something took place while you slept. I pray for your finances, Mom and Dad. I pray for your finances, that God Almighty will touch the finances so that your marriage could become peaceful once again. I pray for the son, the daughters who have gone sideways, that God Almighty will bring them back. Hallelujah, Jesus. I pray that November 3rd, that God, that you would have your hand in this. And regardless, God Almighty, whoever is president, that they would adhere to the Holy Spirit that they would heed to the Holy Spirit, that they would listen to you, Holy Spirit, that they would listen to your guidance and that they would submit to your guidance and submit to your presence and submit to your, to your authority. And I pray, God Almighty, that they get such hunger and thirst for you, God, that they would seek you first, God Almighty, before making any decision. Gracias, Holy Spirit. Father, thank you. I love you, Jesus. In the name of Christ Jesus, in Jesus' mighty name, God. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. See, y'all thought I was y'all thought I was messing around. <laughs> I told you, uh, man. Jess, 
we, we, <laughs> we, like I said, man, me and you could probably go easily another two hours. But um, I haven't had a guest in here for a while. A lot of my shows have been remote, you know. Right. And uh, the fact that you drove across the, the big yeah, city of San Antonio. I to, twice. <laughs> in tennis. Um, the fact that you came out and hung out with me for, for a couple of hours says a lot about you. It says a lot about, you know, uh, you, you, you're a, a shepherd. God is good, man. And, and, and people follow you, man, and people look up to you. And, and uh, I want to tell you, you know, man to man, that, that it's okay if people don't like what you do. I mean, hallelujah. And, 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 and I'm, I'm at, I feel good knowing that you said it on here on my show saying, you know, it doesn't bother you. Him, and, and and you're okay with it, so you know it makes me feel good. Like you you, you are who you are, and that's that's what I think people should be. Just be who you are, right. you know. But Jesse, thank you, man. Me gracias, you know, for you to come and, and give me your, your two hours and, and come to my house and hang out in this little room, yeah, with some headphones over your ears yeah. and and talk um, to the viewers. I I really hope. Uh, that you got something. If it was one verse, if it was something, again, you know, to the viewers, man, you might not agree with the way we stand on things, and that's okay. Like, that's you fine. know, we're not we're not bashing nobody. You know, you, you can bash us if you want, but you know, we're not we're not bashing nobody. That's that's not who we are. Um, if, if, if we could just do this, you know, that that if someone if someone feels a certain way on Facebook. It, it, first of all, let, let's go back to the beginning of Facebook. Facebook is that you could, it, it was written out, that uh, designed, that you could express your feelings in your own little page, in your own little world here. And then people make comments on it. Agree, disagree. Then the little thumb come, the, the thumbs up, and the little caquitas, and the whole yeah. nine yards. Okay, all right, we got that. All right, cool. <laughs> Check it out. If I write something in my Facebook, my Facebook, not his, because I read his stuff. Sometimes I don't come out, but agree with it, or, or if I don't agree with it, I just keep on scrolling. Well, that's cool. But if I don't have nothing to say about what he feels, who am I to go try to contradict him? Who am I to try to, like, no, I'm going to give you my side. You know what, brother? I shut you off. <laughs> hey, or te la, te la, hecho la neta. That well, here you go, brother. Well, let me give you with this one here. And like, oh boy, and all of a sudden flares start coming up. So therefore, let's do this, man. If you don't enjoy someone, well, let me put it this way. Let me put it this way. For you, gente that, that love me a lot. <laughs> it's simple. On your phone, on the Facebook, let's see if I got this right. There's five options. One, you know, you're checking out whatever, and I'm saying whatever, I, I post it, whatever. One, keep scrolling. Two, check it out. Two, first one you scroll, keep on scrolling. Two, you say, you know what? I'm gonna unfriend you. Three, you could always block me. I just put, I just put, take those three. You could always block me. It's simple math. Now, and I don't say to be this to to be rude <laughs> or sarcastic, but yo duermo aquella. Either way, I, I, I love your friendship, but if I'm bothering you that much with how I, how I see things, because I don't go on your Facebook and tell you about how you feel about a certain president or whatever, a certain candidate or whatever. I and mean, I look at you and I smile, and sometimes I say, hey, Sue, you're way out there, brother, you're way out there, sister. And I just pipe this month thing, I just scroll on up. And, and I guarantee you there'll be some peace and tranquility, bro. That's, that's how you got to do it. That's, that's how you got to be. So, um, we come to the end of the show. You know, I try to keep it around two hours or so. And, um, you know, uh, I, I want to, again, Jesse, thank you for, thank for you. coming on. And I want to give a, um, I'm going to call you next week for prayer because, you know, next week I'm having a guest that I met through somebody else. And those of you that are watching, when, when I do share, the, uh, you know, I get a lot of, Hey, bro, you never have girls. It's always guys. It's always a, a guy. I've, I've had a few. I've had a few women. But I have. I have a woman who is gonna come on here next week, and 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 I, I, we've talked a little bit. 
we we haven't even really gotten deep. Um, but I just want to throw this out there already. You're going to want to tune in next Wednesday because I'm going to have a female who has done time, mm-hmm. not not 30 days in the county jail, 60 yeah. days, who has done time right. in the penitentiary. Yeah. And not for reasons that you would think. Um, and I, I don't want to. I don't want to get because I, I, I want to talk to her more, and I want to see how much uh, she's willing to. Because I know the story. The story is powerful. Right. Um, and so, be on the lookout for Sunday or Monday for my little post. Share it. Hey, I, I appreciate you guys liking. Like when I post something, just share it. it. Doesn't take. It takes two minutes just to hit share. Right. And it, and it helps me. You know, it doesn't help me. I'm not making no money, but. You know, it just gets it, it gets out there, it gets bigger. Um, so uh, tune in next week, man, because the, the the lady who I have on is not from South Texas, not from Texas. It's just somebody I met, and it's funny because that gentleman called in. He's the one that talked to the uh, uh, asked you the question mm-hmm. about the Eucharist. Um, I, I met her through him, okay. and he he watches and he enjoys it. I touch different subjects. Okay. It's never the same. So um, he's like, dude, I have this girl would be great. You know, so you guys tune in. I know I'm leaving it kind of bland. Like, come on, bro. No, no you just look out on Sunday or Monday for that post. And uh, and you're definitely going to enjoy next week's show. It's going to be another powerful show um, to my viewers. Thank you guys for tuning in. I really appreciate it. It's a uh, it's another Wednesday in the books. Um, thank you, Jesse, again for being here. Thank you for 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 being who you are, brother. For being who you are, and to my viewers, man, keep being you. Keep doing you, and and next week, um, get out there and vote. Amen. Please do. No matter which way you go, get out there and just vote, man. Vote early if you can. You know, don't open your mouth if you didn't vote. But, don't open your mouth if you didn't vote. If you didn't vote. Yeah, you know what I'm yeah. saying. If you didn't vote. And you, you ain't got a leg to stand on either way. So um, with that being said, you know, thank you guys. I, I appreciate you guys hanging out. We have another Wacky Wednesday in the books. Jesse, gracias. Uh, to everybody, thank y'all. Y'all have a wonderful, wonderful, wonderful evening. And uh, we'll see y'all again next Wednesday, 7.30 p.m. Central Time. You're going to want to tune in. Y'all have a good night. Thank you. I gotta end it over there. <laughs>